Hello, mortals, and welcome to the series finale of Dice X Machina, an episode that we are calling The Storm. I am your DM, Riley Silverman, and joining me for the last time are my intrepid team of adventurers. I will go around the horn and say hello to all of them now. Uh, let us start with, let's start with our newest member, our, our, our newcomer, one of our two new newcomers this season. Uh, let's go, let's say hello to Joy. Hi, Joy. How hello. are you? Hi, I am Joy and I play Marfine, a uh, satyr bard who is going to look like she knows what she's doing today. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. Exactly. Make it, mean, <laughs> total party kill. All right. Uh, next, we're going to go over to our, uh, let's go to our trickster little, uh, our trickster rogue, uh, Lysandros. Hello, Jordan. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan, and I'm a trickster rogue. <laughs> uh my i play lysandros who is a uh he is a satyr rogue who is also an arcane trickster so he's also an illusionist and a gambler and just sort of wanders around doing whatever strikes his fancy uh he's he's pretty zen about his lack of actual like direct connections to the world and everything like that and he has an on again off again uh it's complicated relationship with phoenix the god of deception. And uh, yeah, that's me. All right. Speaking of people who have off again, off again relationships with gods, let's say hello to Callie, Ashlyn Rose. Hey, everyone. It's Ashlyn Rose. Uh, yes, I play Callista. Um, most of you probably know by now is a Leonin warrior fighter. Always going to say warrior. Um, she's a Leonin fighter who is now level 20 and has so many reactions. Uh, she does not like the gods. Never has. Never will. Never going to change. We tried. We did try. And uh, is excited to uh, see how this finale goes. So you're saying Callista uh, leveled up into a Karen because she just has so many reactions. <laughs> yes. Yes. Great. Oh, but she also got a nose piercing. Oh, nice. I don't know if it actually wow. shows, but yeah, it's there. Oh, wow. Is that yours? Yes. Or is that just for the character? Both, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Well, I, I can pull I was, it out. Well, but I was going to say it looks good, but if it's not yours, then fine. Whatever. I'm maybe it can mine. be. I can maybe make it permanent. Do we gotta, hey, you do what you want to do. <laughs> All right. And uh, and last, but certainly not least, our demigod himself. Uh, let's say hello to Zindar. Yeah, what's up? My name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bar, Critical Bar across all social media channels, and I am Zendar, the Ar the alchemist, uh, artificer slash wizard, and yeah, demigod son of Farika. So he definitely really like God. Sorry about it, Callista. This God Ling is probably going to help save you today. So perhaps you have a change of heart. No, I will never force religion on anyone. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, we will we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm very excited to see this level 20 boy come into his own power. I am excited as well to see what happens with it. And just so you all know in the chat, uh, we are, as always, aiming for a $250 episode goal. When we hit that goal each night, it allows us to continue to pay our amazing cast on all our shows and also bring content like this to the air. But even if you can't afford to back us, please spread the word about the channel and share this series with your friends and family. After this week, this is going to be the completed series. You'll be able to share the entire story from start to finish. And you can say, hey, here's some of the great content the Saving Throw Show puts out. We want to support this channel and bring more stuff to the table. And on that note, as a bonus incentive, if we hit $250 tonight, we normally do a Magic the Gathering card pool because we're going to bring it into something moving forward. We can't really do that when this is the end of the story. So all I will say is that if we hit $250 tonight, I will do something special. I will find, I will bring it into the game. I will make it a thing. It could be the gods intervening. It can be something special for one of the characters. I don't even know yet, but I promise you if we hit $250, I will make it worth your while. And if you don't have $250 lying around, most of us don't, a tip of just $15 will allow you to send us a message, which we will read live on the air. We call it a message from the gods. Send us your goofy or heartfelt messages, and you can crush our fundraising goals all in one. And this is our last time as a group playing this game, so I would love to have some sweet messages or whatever from you all to read to the, to the audience and read to, your, to you and to our cast members one last time. It's one of my favorite things doing the show is seeing the goofy things that you send our way. And with that, I'm going to, speaking of a couple of things that we're sending your way, I'm going to hand it off to Jordan to read some ads for us. 
Hi there, everybody. It's time for the ads. So we'd like to put a special thanks to our season sponsors, Rule 20 and Hero Forge, for supporting us. Rule 20 gives you the feel of the tabletop virtually. Get access to great maps, tokens, sound effects, dynamic lighting, and more. Use exclamation point Roll20 in chat for info and type exclamation point Hero Forge in chat to check out the wonderful customization tool they've created. We also have a partnership with Die Hard Dice. You can save 10% at Die Hard Dice by using the code RollDice at checkout. Use command exclamation point DH Dice in chat for links and info. And you can order our friend Critical Bard's dice set. Or maybe not, right? You say it was maybe sold out? I'm checking on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. Check, check, find out. Click that maybe link to find out. Send a message saying bring back critical bard dice and sell more of them because I want them. Show them how much demand there is. All right. And hey, everybody, if you are watching us on YouTube, thank you so much for your support throughout this entire show. Do us a solid. Leave us a like, comment, subscribe, smash that bell, the whole nine yards. It really helps the show, but it also helps the Saving Throw channel as a whole. And speaking of which, you can support the channel now with your monthly tips, with your month, with your tips and your monthly subscriptions all in one place using coffee. Uh, enter exclamation point coffee in the chat. Check it out on coffee. You can tip like you would regularly. Or you can also join the Saving Throw Exploration Society as a monthly member. By doing so, you will get all the same rewards you would on Patreon. And you could unlock things like our special toasts and things like that. Plus, we like it because coffee doesn't take a cut. So uh, almost 100% of your tip goes straight to the channel after PayPal. But, you know, what are you going to do? Fees are fees. So that's what we got. Uh, and I believe, Dom, am I correct? We already have one. Uh, we have two, two toasts uh, to start the show off with tonight. Is that true? Okay, oh. I will. I hopefully by the time I get to the second one, the, the the third one will be there. So let's do that real quick before we start the show. Uh, I believe this one might take a little while tonight, so I want to get into it quickly. Um, but this is delightful. Um, oh, okay. So the first one requires me to sing. Uh, I don't know if I have to sing, but I'm going to because the way it was presented. Yay. So this first one comes to us from With Where With All, and hopefully my singing will be just off key enough that we won't get sued for copyright infringement. But it's parody rights <laughs> anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, here we go. <laughs> where have all the con men gone and where are all the gods? Where's the streetwise Leonin to fight the rising odds? Isn't there a bright bard with one toxic remedy? <laughs> Every night I toss and I turn and I dream of what I need. I need a hero. And that's the end of that one. <laughs> and that's the nice. end of singing. So congratulations for that. For everybody who doesn't have to hear me sing anymore. Um, yes. And, uh, all right. I don't know if this one is coming from Old Scottish Lady Phoenix or I'm supposed to read it as Old Scottish Lady Phoenix. <laughs> You already know the Both. answer to that question. Yeah, uh, let's see. Okay, Both. that's a that's a combination of two wildly yeah. different voices this for is, me. But let's see how it goes. This is yeah. too many voice directions. Um, yeah. Good evening, dearies. I heard the Rosen athletes shave their heads to do better in the races. I say it's balderdash. All right, so that's that one. Uh, <laughs> I think that was pretty good. I, oh my so, gosh. All right. Uh, and then uh, I don't think that was Scottish at all, by the way. It was very Irish. But anyway, um, all right. Uh, <laughs> this last one comes from our very good friend, Vampire54, who sadly has to tell us that. So I believe the forces of darkness intercepted our messenger last week. Have a good finale. Uh, sadly, my work schedule has changed. So off to bed for me. So play patty cake with the gods, I guess. So, Vampire54, we are sad that you are not going to be able to watch the show live with us. But as we said, it will be on podcasts. It'll be on YouTube. You will be able to enjoy all the ruckus that will happen tonight. And just right. to let the table know, we already have, uh, we have three uh, re-rolls to the table already. Hey. Uh, like might be oh, we have four re-rolls to the table. So let's go. Thank that to start you. Off with. We're so, going to need them. Now, let me uh, move things on. down so I can see for now on when things change and I can close the window on my computer. So, champions, we begin not far from where we left off. You are just outside the home that once belonged to Kia the Sage, who has given you a little bit of her own power and absconded off to parts unknown to you. 
Everyone make a perception check for me. No. Uh oh. Guidance. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you roll above a fifteen. I rolled a solid six. Oh, that's, okay. that's actually pretty good. Uh, I rolled a fifteen. Okay, you got a fifteen. Callie did. did. Callie did. Sixteen on the die, and okay. I am going to because I haven't really used them, and I have the ability to. I'm going to add a flash of genius to that to add five to that roll. So that's okay. a twenty-one. I All rolled right. a fourteen. Okay, um, Zindar and Callista, you notice it right away. The subtle hint of vibration in the ground, a low, faint rumble in the air. But your exclusive claim on this moment doesn't last long. Soon, your friends feel it too. A roll of parchment loosely placed upon the piles and piles of scrolls of writings that litter the former home of Kia the Sage collapses and falls to the ground. Soon, chalices of wine begin to rattle on the table. The dishes and silverware from the, from the spread the old elven woman had laid out before you begin to tremor, and soon the earth itself joins in beneath your feet. A low hum pierces the silence, the sounds of hundreds of desperate conch horns sounding from the ships in the harbor below. It's not long before the source of this disruption makes itself clear. Even a passing glance beyond the outward cliffs of the villa reveals a massive wave crushing its way across the Bay of Melitus, obliterating walls and ships and any other mortal constructions in its path before eventually reaching the marinas and shipyards that line the border of the outskirts of the city. Water pours past the shore, creating canals out of what were once streets. You watch, helpless, as market stalls, the homes of those unable to afford space within the larger walls of Intermelitus proper, and even a small ramshackle inn where half of you first stayed when beginning your journey together, seemingly so long ago, are washed away. As the wave crashes down on the city, finally its source moves into view. While the Archons of Legend may have once possessed the sophistication and rationality to subjugate the citizens of Pharaohs, what looms over the ruins of the Miletian coastline has been twisted and broken by the eons of captivity in its underworld prison, forged and molded by the constant struggles against the other lost titans it was locked away with. It's hard to even take in the destructive alien form of the being that with the flick of a colossal armored tail smashes away the once proud statue of Melitus's founding kings. A pair of pincers crushing and ripping through solid stone structures and tentacles snatching people from the streets and crashed ships below feeding them into its gargantuan jaws. The storm kraken has arrived. Everyone roll initiative. The what? Ooh, storm kraken. Has it gotta storm be who? Water? Storm, storm who? Storm where? Okay. Well, where is what used to be the city of Melitus? <laughs> <laughs> Let me roll wow. initiative. Cats don't like water. I should probably roll initiative for the storm kraken. Wow, level 20, and I'm still rolling crap initiatives. I got a 10. <laughs> well, it makes you all feel any better. The storm kraken does not get a bonus to its initiative. So that nice. might make you feel better. No, it doesn't. because I got a 10 with the plus it four. <laughs> I'm gonna use our re-rolls because I got a one. Oh wow. Oh yeah, please do that. Oh, wow. Thank you. I'm not too worried. Initiative only really matters the first turn anyway. Yeah. So like I said, you, know, you can be happy the Storm Kraken uh did not get a, a bonus to its initiative since it rolled an 18 on its initiative. Uh yeah. let's throw a big thank you out there to Vampire54. Uh for the oh, very wow. generous tip. Oh, Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Vampire54. Vampire, thank you thank so much. That must you. be why they were saying goodbye. They couldn't watch tonight, but they wanted to send us off very kindly. Thank you, Vampire54, so much. 
Oh my gosh! Well, and enjoy, Evan Dale just raided us. To watch it. For that too. Hey, welcome, welcome Raiders. All right, uh, Dom. With the combination of that and our toast, are we at two fifty already? Okay, something. Hey! Cool. All right, I have. I know exactly what it is, and I will. I'll be excited to point that out when it happens. Yeah, I believe uh, Riley right. did say something beneficial to the players will happen. I didn't say that. I said something will happen. I'm sure it was beneficial <laughs> yeah. for the uh, Meteor hits the earth. Sephiroth wins. All right. Um, okay. Let me. All right. With, uh, no, I'm, I'm stopping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hang on. Let me just add the turn here for this 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 thing. Uh, let me just add a turn storm for the storm cracking. cracking. What in the deuce? Yep. All right. Let's go ahead and get everybody's turns. One second here. Let me just scroll. I have a big map here, so I have to like find where everybody is so I can give you all turn orders. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm in the wrong. All right. Big map. Big monster. All right. Um, let me add turns for everybody. Sorry, the the lovely and generous donation threw me off from my speed. So I'm all, I'm very happy to have that reason. All right, Callie, what was your initiative? Uh, with my reroll, I got a. Wait, why is that perception? Hold on, I'm pretty sure I got a fourteen. Let me. Do, yep, fourteen. Okay. Fourteen. I feel like your your perception is probably lower than your initiative. So if you rolled that, I would still let you have it because it's not a better roll. Um, <laughs> Uh, Mara Fine, what is your initiative? It was 10. 10? All right. <laughs> okay. And then uh, Lysandros, what's your initiative? My initiative is 10. 10. Great. All right. All right. And then, of course, uh, Zindar, what's your initiative? <laughs> 23. Ooh. Nice. Oh, nice. That's with so, my flash of genius, so I'm good. Mm. Great. Just because you're a demigod, you think you can just have a higher initiative? I'm I <laughs> mean, <laughs> uh, there you are. All right, all right. So now, anyone who is in Roll Twenty, I know not all of my players are able to access Roll Twenty uh, because of computer connection issues. That's fine. Uh, I made a map. We're on the map. You are all located in the lower right-hand corner. There we go. I was like, of it, so you should be able to see yourselves. But yeah. I, I just want to invite you to zoom out. Yeah, it's zoom out pretty... at the map. Yeah, and then let me just go ahead and bring up the uh, storm kraken, um, which I don't know if we can pull it forward just yet for the show, but the audience will see it soon. But I'm just going to go ahead and bring the storm kraken out. So there's the storm kraken, and uh, it should be bigger, but I didn't have a big enough uh, map for it to be as big as I wanted it to be. So I know it's kind of small, but just like you know, bear with me. Um, great. So, uh, Zindar, you're first. Uh, so what do you want to do? That's how big it is. <laughs> I mean, it's actually bigger than that. Um, but you know, that's it's it's like towering up over. Um, so <laughs> I, we gonna die. Oh, we gonna die. That technically, there's no limit to the size of a creature I can distract with my mage hand. Yay! Oh, no. But you know what? That's actually so true. Cause you know how we get so annoyed with gnats, and gnats are like less than our pinky. Yep. <laughs> um, and it'll just be like a little invisible hand going. Gah, gah, okay. Gah, gah. Uh, cool. Then, uh, yeah, don't like that. I'm going to. Um, I can't. I can't access myself. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just dragged images there. Let me see if I can get. No worries. Right. No worries. Uh, what do you want to do, and then I can move you while I'm while, while we're getting you. Access. I must have move a lot. Okay. How far do you? How far can you move? Uh, well, it's going to be ninety feet in total because I'm going to bonus action misty step. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just point on the map where you want me to move you to, and I'll move you there because I think yep. Dom has to give you movement. Let me so. let me do a thing real quick. Uh, I'm so far. Why am I at the bottom? Bottom. I get, you can move up a little bit. I just stuck you on there, so I had you on the Okay. Map. I mean, I, I'd probably be next to uh, Callista, like right okay. here to start. Okay. I'll so put you there to here, start. No so you are next to Callista. Yeah, yeah. And for those who can't see the map, not all of our viewers uh, can look at Mole 20 yeah. or can see the map. I don't think it's even up right now. I took a map uh, that I actually got from a, a, a map maker that's available on Roll 20. So uh, you can buy it on our sponsor site. Um, 
it is actually it's it's a, a map maker named Tactical Master, and they had a bunch of maps of of island cities which have a bunch of canals, and I have repurposed them yeah, into city streets that have been flooded. 30. So, all right. So what I'm doing is I'm going to Misty Step, which is going to get me over here. Um, okay. I'm sure these aren't just boarded up, and I can I I, I I'm going to get through, and then I'm going to run over, cha cha cha, run over here, whatever. I'm going to jump. Well, those are. What I will say is all those buildings are homes that have and buildings that have been just like crushed by waves. Oh, Jesus. So like, okay. you can probably see through some of them because there's a lot of like debris and gotcha. walls have been knocked down. But yeah. those are impediments. Like those aren't things you can just move through. They are buildings and structures. Yep. So this yep, is like yep, yep, yep. street. Yeah. And then uh basically with this with the 60 move, because I'm using my entire movement. Okay, so um, where did you where did you click to for your movement your last bit? I'm gonna I'm gonna end okay. up over here. So gotcha. I'm gonna I'm gonna swim Great. I'm gonna swim over here and then come over here. Yep. Great. Uh, and I'm just gonna say, um, yeah, let's go. And that's that's literally my entire turn. Okay. It's moving. Okay. You no, know, maybe um, I shouldn't get it right there, but hey, I did. It's fine. Okay. Uh, that is your turn. Uh, it is now the Storm Kraken's turn. Oh and, no. <laughs> uh, you are the oh, only no. thing you can see right now, and you no, just me said, can't see me. You can't see you. No. Are you? Are you invisible? No. <laughs> but he's not moving. Are you, are you, are you just hand hand in his face. Do not perceive he's me. Doing this. You oh, can't see are, me. I'm sorry. Do you think strong krakens follow Jurassic Park rules? <laughs> yes. Maybe. Because they don't. They they, they follow strong kraken rules. Um, oh, please. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So it is. Let's see how far it is. Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, of its three attacks that it gets on its turn, uh, Two of which, actually, is it just two or uh, all three of them? Oh, yeah, they all have a 20-foot reach. So let's see how far away you are currently from it. You are 50 feet from it. So it's going to move, like, here so that you're 20 feet from it. And then it's going to hit you with all of its attacks because you're oh, what's right in front of it. Oh, my gosh. Um, because that's how this works. All right. No, so I didn't first... think about this. I didn't think about this thoroughly. I I thought it was a bold move. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it works out for them. Um, <laughs> let's see how it goes. Uh, so its first attack is going to be the pincer attack. Um, so it's going to go try to hit you, and uh, that attack is going to be a wow. It's a twenty-two to hit. Does twenty-two hit you? It does. Okay. So that first attack, that pincer attack, is um... going to do. Yes. You're way too far. <laughs> I'm 90 feet away. She has a bunch of wild reactions. So oh, let's see if Jesus. you have any of them. Um, so as I see this storm kraken move closer, um I, the vigilant defender that I am, am going to Use my special reaction that I can take once on every creature's turn except mine. Okay. And um, make an attack of opportunity. If I may. you are you are not within melee range of it. Am I in charging range? Uh, let's see. What is your charging? What is your charging speed? Mm -hmm. I'm checking. Because you are uh, you are ninety five feet away from it right now. <laughs> Uh, let me check. Actually, and honestly, you also can't move 95 feet straight in a row because there's a building in between you and it. So actually, I'm going to say you were not in charging range of it because you would have to go up, around. Like, basically, uh, I forgot. Sorry, you're right. I forgot that you are not looking at the map. So I apologize for that. Sorry. That, is, that, is, that is a fair point. Uh, Ashlyn, you would basically have to go. There's, there's a bunch of bridges and city streets and things like that that you would have to go across to get to it. So there is... There was no physical way that you could do a melee-based attack opportunity now. It is okay. Zindar, Zindar has put himself in very dangerous harm's way. So I did. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I'll survive. Okay. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, no, I'm practically a god. Um, it's true. We'll, we'll see. see. Well, well yeah. then I don't recall ever saying immortality was part of that deal. I am right, the, the, I am the keyless <laughs> of this. Then episode. I, <laughs> I am not that vigilant defender, and I say, "Well, we're gonna see how this turns out, Jimmy God." Yeah, you. Are, it's like. <laughs> You basically saw you saw uh, Zendar like kind of nightcrawler his way over to this creature and then taunt it and then 
before realizing that none of his friends were there to back him <laughs> up, the creature is like, all right, cool. This is the thing that I'm going to do now. Um, and uh, I don't think I don't think Zindar realized that it being called the Storm Kraken might have quite a few things up its up its up its sleeve. No, um, no, no. He thought he just he just he was in his head for a second, not fair, out of ego. Fair. He just ran. He's like, let's do this. Oh yeah. crap! Cool. All right. So the first attack that we yeah. did is going to do uh, 19 damage to you, um, okay. and it's I don't think it's any of the things you are strong against. It is just bludgeoning damage. You don't have resistance that's, to that, do you? I don't have resistance, no. Okay, great. So that's the first attack. Second attack is going to be a tail whip. Uh, so that's going to swing around and try to hit you. Let's see how that does. Um, does a 31 hit you? Yeah? Okay, great. So that's going to hit you. Um, so let's go ahead and do the damage for that. All right, and then uh, that's going to do twenty-four damage to you because it critted on one of its on one of its damage rolls. Uh, got a, it roll a max damage on one of them, so twenty-four uh, bludgeoning damage. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, it is going to do a tentacle grasp to hit you. Let's see how that does. Um. So as I see this happen, uh huh. <laughs> as I see him. G or him take a lot of damage, Z uh, Zendar. I um, I'm like, oh my gosh! And I realize that I have a warding maneuver, and that I learned in training. And I, I after being kind of like frozen by like just seeing this behemoth that I have like I've never like been faced with something this gigantic, and I am like scared and intimidated for once. Um, I grab my shield and I am going to. Uh, Basically, it says the creature you can see within five feet is hit by an attack. You can roll a 1d8 as a reaction and add that number roll to the creature's AC against the attack. If you're wielding a melee weapon or shield, are you within five feet, Zendar? No. <laughs> no I thought you were near. next to me. What I am I'm I'm 90 feet away. Come on. Ashley, I'm going to send you a picture of a screenshot of the map right now. <laughs> I, I just want to send you a picture of a screenshot of the map because I know that you can't see it, so you're at disadvantage. Yeah, I'm gonna open um, up. So Twitch I just text. I just, I just, I just texted you. <laughs> it's, I don't think it's up on Twitch right now for a reason that will become apparent fairly soon. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, basically, the reason why, first of all, yeah, all right. you, you were no. He he ran very far away from you to do this. He right now, Zindar is a straight line. He is 80 feet away from you, but that's also like there are buildings. There are walkways you would have to go around nope, to get good. to it. So yeah, um, carry yeah. on. And also, he's on the other side of a friend. building. He's on the other side of a building. Uh, so uh, yeah, th there's no nice DM tonight. I'm sorry. No, nope, uh, no, you're good. So the tentacle grasp does 29 to hit you. That hits. Um, and the damage for that. Sorry, I'm on the wrong monster now. Damage for the tentacle grasp is 21. And that is going to be 21 uh, bludgeoning as well. However, you are now grappled. Got it. Cool. All right. Um, yep. And yep. He just got effed up. Yep. Yep. So now you are actually grappled by the, the Storm Kraken. Uh, and that is the rest of its turn. And uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, let that stand. All right. Um, next. Next it is. Callie's turn. <laughs> yeah. So uh, after seeing that go down, Callie's just going to peace out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. Smart move. <laughs> yeah. Callie's going to be like, oh, I got some uh, some fish to catch. Uh, Callie's going to run in now. Uh, okay. The best how far can you possible. move? Yeah. How far can you move on your turn? Leave. Uh, I can scale buildings. Okay. Is that, does it make it? not like unusual terrain or is it just like standard like what's your is it just like same speed as your is your climbing speed the same as your running speed uh let me double check that with the slippers of climbing oh yeah you had a slipper of climbing yes you can yes. that's fine you don't yes. need to double check that that's fine i forgot you had those even yes. though i gave them to you yeah um and then my movement my walking speed is 35 so that's uh 70 if i'm double moving. Dash. okay um so let me just tell you how far you can go um if you go 70 feet Okay, so you can be you'll you'll st there's there's one route you can go where you'd still be 80 feet from him for your next turn, and there's one route you can go where you would be 20 feet from him on your next turn. However, you would have to cross water, so it would be difficult terrain. All right, and there's no like straight shot 
of worth avoiding no. water. No, if, if, if you look at the screenshot that I just texted yeah. you, basically you're in that lower right hand corner. Okay. So you either would have to go up that route that goes along the sides of buildings, yeah. or you would have to go to the left and you would go across the waterway. Okay. Uh, uh, also, I know, there, I know there are boats on this map, and the way that I'm interpreting that is these are boats from the marina that were washed into the city streets when the, these, aren't, these aren't boats that are parked in the middle of city streets normally. All right. <laughs> this um, is debris. I think Kelly, what Kelly would do is she's going to go and try to fi find Zindar because she, after, she knows it's not probably ideal to separate in a situation like this. Yeah. Um, so whatever way she saw him run and she's going to yell, like, she's like, I'm going to find Zendar and, um, run off that way. Okay. Um, I will put you then, uh, look at that picture. I'm going to take you the Southern route. So you're going to go, uh, you're going to be, you will have water to cross, but it's, it's not, it's like, it's doable. Right. Um, difficult terrain. I'm just going to put you, so you are now kind of on the edge of the waterfront. You can see the Kraken holding zindar in its tentacles okay but you are not within range to do anything about it right now unless you have a range weapon you can use mm, but nope. okay plus you use your action to dash anyways yeah. you get anything on bonus actions or is that it is that your turn let me double check if my god's Bainax has anything fun i can do uh nope yeah. that's just I, heavy hitting um, i'm definitely gonna say did not expect the squishy wizard to be the first one to initiate combat hey, in this round so i this is very good this is very interesting for me. And uh, now I'm like, oh no, did I make too powerful a monster? But we'll find out. <laughs> um, bonus actions. Oh, I have a button that separates all that for me. Um, uh, the Kraken is how far away now? Uh, it is currently. Hang on. You are now 30 feet from it, but that is difficult terrain. So factor in that if you move. That's fine. Again. It's not going to do it. Um, okay. All right, nope, I'm just gonna plan my next move and uh, sit there calm and kind of like, you know, gather myself for battle. I've trained for this. I know what I'm doing and we're just gonna wait. Okay, um, at the end of your turn, the Kraken's gonna take one of its legendary actions. Great. Um, which is, that's bite attack. It, it gets three legendary actions per round. However, if I use its bite attack, it only gets the one because uh, it has to use that for all three of its actions. But uh, it's going to pick up the creature that's grappled by it, which is Zindar. Uh, it's going to attack you, Zindar, with a bite attack. Uh, and that is going to be, let's see if it hits. That's 35 to hit. So that hits. Uh, and then it's going to do an additional piercing damage to you. It's going to do 34 piercing damage. But more importantly, Zindar, it um, swallows you. Um, so it actually grapples you. It throws you in its mouth. Um, you are no longer grappled. Um, and I will say that you, you are, while you are swallowed, normally you are blinded and restrained, but I believe you are immune to both those conditions. Am I correct? You're, oh, you're muted. I am not immune to restrained, but I am immune to blinded. Okay. So you were not blinded. You can see, but you are inside a dark creature's mouth. So it's dark. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're ostensibly blinded. If you have any dark vision, you can see like whatever. Um, and, um, for now, that is all that's going to happen to you. Uh, and you currently, because you are inside the creature, uh, you do take, uh, you, you, you are considered to have total cover against attacks and other effects outside of the storm kraken. So mm -hmm. that is all that's happened, uh, for you for now. So that is, that's it. Great. Okay. Noted. Um, Goodbye, All right. cool world. Yeah. Do you have um, any life left? Yeah. Nice. You're level 20s, y'all. Um, even the wizards are pretty good at level 20. And plus, plus Zendar is more artificial than wizard, and artificials are a little bit less, a little more beefy than wizards. So, a little bit, uh, yeah. all right. Uh, that is the end of its turn. Now it is that's the end of its of its legendary action. Uh, now we move on to Marfine. It is now your turn. Uh, so I tried to find the ruler. <laughs> How far it, it looks it looks like a loop with like a like a comb stuck in the middle of it. It looks like, like yeah, it looks like a comb. Yeah. Okay. So you're about 95 feet from it right now. Perfect. I don't have to go anywhere. Um so I have an attack that I just learned this morning. <laughs> that's called okay. um delay blast fireball and it can reach up to 100 like it's 150. Great. Okay. Um 
So I'm going to stay safe and far away from that thing. <laughs> okay. And do um, that. I will say that you will have to at least move so that you are not trying to fire through a building to hit it. Oh, man. So if you want to move <laughs> Can up. Can I move on top um, of the building? Yeah, if you want to, I will say that you do not have slippers or spider climb. So if you're on top of the building, it will cost you extra movement to do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can go on top of the building. I could say you could also, if you wanted to, you could probably go up to about here. Oh, sorry, I'm going to move my mouse. You could probably go up to this bridge here and do it from there if you want. I think that would give you a straight shot through those okay. buildings to hit it. Okay, that seems still far away. Okay. Well, then I will do, I will move there because then I can still run. Great. Yep. All right. And then you're going to use this fireball? Uh, yeah, the bla delayed blast fireball. Wait, let me make sure you can actually go as far as you did. Okay. Unfortunately, you can only go third. How, what's your speed right now on your, your uh, sheet? My you... speed is two... somewhere on this sheet. Where is my speed? 35, well, I think, as a satyr. Oh, 35. I see. Walking speed. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so from where you were already, I'll say you can get to about where where my arrow is right now. Oh, okay. So. Okay, I'll just move this. And... Okay, so delayed blast fireball uh -huh. is that and is that a you roll a magical attack spell or is that a saving throw? Um, it is a cast on. I think Vit. <laughs> Hang on, uh, let me see. I'll look at it. It's a spell slot. Um. Cast time one action, concentration up to one minute, dexterity. Uh, uh, someone else, I think you, the monster will do a saving throw of dexterity that, of that's 18. Not so um, the monster's making a saving throw, not you? Not, you're yeah. Not, you're, not trying to, you're, not, you're not making or an attack, attack, throw, attack making. slash saving is yes, what it a says. Dex save. A dex save. Great. So you got it. So let me go ahead and, and have it roll its dex save. Uh, it is not proficient in that, so that's good news for you. Um, it rolled a 13, so it did not make its save. So go ahead and roll your damage. Um, and that I'm going to let you do it for this round. Yeah. Yeah, because I think you probably could chuck it over a building. I feel like that's probably pretty doable. Um, I don't know so... what any of that means that just popped out. <laughs> oh, um, so let me, read, let me read the... Yeah, I don't know why there's two different... <laughs> that's like, what is all this? So 43 damage is what it took initially. Uh -huh. Let me just read the, the spell. This is not a spell that I'm familiar with, actually. So I just saw um, a delayed fireball that was far when I was adding spells, and I was like, this works. <laughs> okay. So uh, basically, you you throw the spell. There's an extra bead. And then at the end of your turn, if the bead is not yet detonated, it, also, it increases the damage by another D6. Mm -hmm. So okay. so it did it did 43 um damage and the, the the spell is done but if she could have potentially held it for a long time and made it even bigger which is what a delayed uh, blast comes from oh so like you hold it each turn and the longer you hold it the more the longer it adds you hold up. it the more it adds oh, up that's awesome that's a, a cool spell it's a seven level okay. spell and well, it's I dangerous do it. i want to do it i want to do that <laughs> okay so you're gonna hold it yeah. for this turn you're gonna hold on for another turn okay so right now it did not all it'll, it'll make a saving throw later when you throw it right now you're holding that okay spell. great all right that's your turn then all right um all right, Lysandro, it's your turn. All right, so I'm going to have to close a little bit of the distance uh, going on here. Um, so I have a movement of 35, and I can use a bonus action to dash as well. So how close can I get to it and still like kind of end up behind something so that I'm not just like um, right can, in the thing? I don't think you can get right up next to it, but any of those, if you're looking at the map, any of those structures around it are buildings. So you could duck behind those buildings. So like it is a hulking creature that is up over something. So if you're behind a building, it's probably not going to notice you right away. So just keep in mind that anytime you have to cross water, that's going to be a uh, difficult terrain because it's, it's a big flooded street. Okay. So, so I, don't, I don't know how far you can go in one turn because you are currently pretty far away from it. So I can go 70 feet in one turn. Okay. So you could get all the way up to the waterfront. You could so you could you could, you could, duck, you could duck behind one of these buildings here. Um so I, I think one of those buildings that are kind of to the lower, like that are kind of off to it's like that are kind of south southeast of it, you could probably get behind. Um that's pro or like maybe this little building over here. But I would say I would say close you could probably get to it right on this turn is behind one of these two buildings that are kind of in the middle of the map. I could get like, uh... 
need some good boss battle music. Like, bum, bum. Not really boss battle. Regular battle. <laughs> Not really boss battle. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. And how far away Thank is that? Thank you for reminding like... me that I, I wanted to add some effects to the boss battle. Give us them effectianas. Uh, okay, so if I can go 70 feet. I guess I will try. Yeah, I'm just going to move up through here and then kind of like duck behind this building. Okay. All right. And that's your movements. Is yeah. there anything else you can do in your turn? So Lysandros, you know, shoots around to that place. Uh, he uses his move to go there. And then he snaps his fingers and casts Mage Hand. Okay. <laughs> Which seems low key, but, you know, I got abilities and stuff going on. So we'll see how that goes. Seems low key. All right, cool. Um, all right. And then does, does the Mage Hand do anything on this turn or does it just appear? Nope. It appears. Okay. It appears and uh, and it moves. Uh, how far away am I, am I from this thing now? It's like... You are about, yeah, about 40 feet from it right now. 40 feet? It moves like 10 feet in the direction of the thing. Okay. So that sounds good. So Jordan, do you say it appears to do nothing? It, it, you can't even see it. <laughs> it's gone. Mm. Invisible mage hand. Ooh. Ooh. No. Rogue talents. Uh, speaking of rogue talents, now that mm -hmm. we're at the end of the first round of battle, the gods have realized that you need some help. And they are unfortunately themselves are not able to, they cannot directly participate in things that are happening on the mortal plane. However, you hear voices right. from the gods coming down from Nyx to cheer you on. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and read off some of these things the gods are saying to you as they bless you. Uh, one of the gods that you might know of named Artemis2814 says, have a great show and a great finale. <laughs> Another Cheers. god named DJ Regular says, we bid a fond farewell to our mythic heroes as they hopefully sail off into the sunset as epic level victors. Here's to seeing you all again on the saving throw sooner rather than later. Uh, Vampire54, uh, who loves to troll me, uh, says, what's this? What's this? A level up this season? Oh no, I can't believe my eyes. Guess no, surprise. Level ups for me, so I guess I'll have to do my best and get the special secret now to X-Men Town. We have to finish Halloween Town always to the end of it. All right, I, I try to do it in the cadence of the song. You got I, it. I, I, whatever. Uh, and then finally, our last god is, of course, Phoenix in a ghost face mask, who says, one of the other gods got everyone together today to talk about my favorite scary movies and me and my massive costume collection. It was Heliod's intervention, but it felt more like Heliod's punishment. Um, <laughs> and that's those gods' things. And finally, we see Thassa appear in her Nyx form from the heavens. And you can tell that she is angry that a creature would defile her glorious oceans in such a way to send them flooding into the city. That is not how Thassa rolls. Thassa is the god of the oceans. The oceans chip away at rock over the course of patient time and centuries. And this storm kraken is an affront to everything Thassa stands for. And Thassa will not have it. And so she is sending to you her emissary to help you fight this battle and a wave crashes over the side of the borders of Melitus. And that wave, unlike the vulgar destructive wave of the storm Kraken seems full of hope and light and the stars of Nyx that you have occasionally seen when being blessed by a God. And that rain, the water from that wave forms into the shape of appears what used to be a human woman. However, she seems to have been affected a little bit by the watery blessings of a certain ocean god. And this woman stands before you. And Danielle Radford, would you like to introduce your character to us? Hello. My name uh. is Lydia. I am an emissary of Thassa. 
<laughs> just kidding i'm lydia hi guys i'm so nice to see you um so my name is lydia um i'm really good with like water and stuff i've been hanging out with Vesa for like a hundred or so years it's been like really <laughs> super tight um oh yeah and i'm like here to help you with like a kraken or whatever i don't know all right and lydia uh i had just dropped you on the map just so I had you in the map, but I will let you have where you want to be on the coastline because that is where Thassa would have deposited you. So just let me know where you want to be and I will put you there. Oh God, it's so scary. Oh God, it's so big. Um, <laughs> I literally was looking at the map. I, I was like, this has to be um, a mistake. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot possibly. Oh God, how far am I? I'm so far. You can be, you can be wherever you, you can be wherever you want to be on the coastline. That's that that's the, that because you're coming up from the coastline. I just put you there so I had all the characters in one spot. But you are being delivered by Thassa, so I will let you choose where you are delivered. Oh to. gosh, bless you. Um, let's put no, me. No, Thassa, bless you. <laughs> I mean, Thassa blesses me. We have a special relationship. Um, hey, you do, but that is that is not time or place. Um, <laughs> I'm, turning, I'm turning. I'm turning into Sophia all of a sudden. Just like you. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's not how we okay that's not fine. Um, um where I'm, I'm sorry i'm looking at where everyone is on the map um i think i want to make sure that i'm next to or close to lisandros okay i will put you i i will let you do that because i want to move things forward so you are dropped um here so you were on the coastline so you, you came up through the water but Great. you are next to them. You are currently exposed, I will say that, because you are being dropped on the on the, the, the edge of the water. So how many feet away am I from that from the, huge from the thing? nonsense? Yeah. Uh you are currently. Oh, sorry, I'm accidentally moving you. And you should have control of your figure. If you don't, when Don gets back, we will have him give you control. You I'm are terrible currently... today. You are currently 40, 40 feet away, but uh, as a fun little thing, uh, Lydia has now been partially flavored as a as a water genasi. Um, so Ooh. you have the same swimming speed as you do motion speed. So the water is not difficult terrain for you because you're just such a good swimmer. That's why Thassa loves you so much. Well, yeah. I mean, Thassa loves me for a lot of reasons. Um, so uh, I rolled initiative. Is it my turn or is it Xandar that's next? Um, it is actually, uh, what is your, what is, you, I think it's your turn. I rolled because, 23. Yeah, you had, you both rolled 23. Uh, technically, the dexterity thing is not the way to do it, but I can't think of a better way to do it. And you are a level 20 rogue, so you yeah. are definitely have a higher dexterity. Go. Oh, wizard, geez. Okay. Yeah. Plus, I think it's All cool. Right. You, plus, I had you arrive at the top of your turn, so it really is your turn. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, super tight. Okay. So, Lydia uh, is now super good with water. I don't mean to brag, you guys, but I'm like super good with water. Um, she has not gotten much smarter in her. <laughs> in her 100 years um and so uh I, I will ask this as a rogue when i cast a spell do i still get my bonus uh not on spells only on melee weapon attacks oh, so man. you, won't, you okay. will not you will not get sneak attack damage if you cast uh like for example your i think five or four or five blasts of eldritch blast that you get you will not you will not get to use your to that no I mean, uh, I guess that's... Oh, yeah, just so you know, she's a little bit of a warlock, too. Oh, lovely. Right. I just want to just just add that when, her when, Lydia, <laughs> when Lydia bursts in on her wave, Lysandros points and goes, look, a new magical friend to report to replace Zindar, who is probably dead now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, uh, ooh, what do I want to cast? I have... Let's see how it is. So much. <laughs> well, and, you got it. Well, well, yeah, don't go get eaten if you don't want to get replaced. I mean, it's a simple solution. <laughs> what is Lydia um, not oh. a permanent solution to a problem? <laughs> a temporary solution to I a permanent know. problem. I, um, <laughs> I, well, let's find out. Uh, <laughs> so Lydia is going to cast, oh, geez, Toll of the Effin' Dead. Um, oh. So that means that I point at one creature, which is this literally i thought the d20 was glitching i didn't think it was this big um i point at the kraken uh which is in range uh, and the sound of beautiful bells fill Ooh. the air around it the uh, uh, uh and so i cast 
the spell upon it. Um, and so let's see what happens. I'm really excited. Well, uh, I will tell you that despite this thing having proficiency in wisdom saves and being a very powerful creature, it rolled an 11 on its wisdom save. So what is your well, spell save DC? Oh, I rolled a 15, Muffo. Oh, no, no. Uh, so for oh. Pull, pull oh, spell dead, save DC. Oh, it, no. Yeah, it, it I don't do a lot of spells. So click on your spellcasting link on on D and D Beyond, um, uh -huh. and I can tell you what it is, but I want you to know. I, you need to learn. You need to use your words. No, um, if you <laughs> if you click on all right, spells, it step say on spell me, save, mommy. It should say spell save. <laughs> um, it should say uh, your your spell save DC is eighteen. So the eleven did not beat it. So then, what you roll is for that for that that spell. Um, it had not yet taken damage. So you will roll four d8, which you can do in roll twenty if you have that set up. Oh, well, oh so they I already rolled that. Um, because I'm oh, that, that, that's the damage you did. That's okay, the fifteen. Much. That's yeah. the fifteen. Okay, everyone. Uh, the storm kraken has finally taken some damage. Woo -hoo! Uh, and it was with roll toll the dead. Uh, how much was it again? Fifteen. Yikers. Which is good news for you because now if you do Toll the Dead again and, and it succeeds, it'll do 4d12 instead of 4d8. That's yeah, it does like a whole thing nice. where it like builds. I yeah. love spells. <laughs> well, no, I just, yeah, Toll the Dead, once, once a creature's taken damage, it's it's a more effective attack. Ah. Um, let, me just, let me make sure it doesn't have a resistance to necrotic damage. I don't think it does, but I just want to make sure. Can it not? Uh, <laughs> it, it does That'd not, so that's okay. Um, <laughs> pew, yeah. pew, pew, pew. Um, oh, wait, sorry. Squish, 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 water sounds. Yeah. What, uh, what does water make when you. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's it. That's what water makes. Um, That's what water makes. I can hear it. It's like a nerf down. <laughs> Great. All right. So that is that is the end of, of your turn. Oh, is there anything else you can do? What, what else can you do in your. Do you have any bonus actions you can do? Ooh, do you I, I would love to have a bonus action. Yeah. Uh, please, dear God, tell me I have a bonus action after yeah. I do this. And Go I think that I do. Like bonus actions, and it should be able to figure it out. Yep. Uh, so, and Danielle's defense, she got the character sheet like an hour ago. So that's okay. For uh, oh, I think I can do Tentacles of the Deep. I think that's that, my bonus section. Um, that's that a bonus? wonderful. If you're a Fathomless Warlock, you surely can. Yep, you can. <gasps> oh, oh, no. All right. So, to no. let everyone know, I can summon a spectral ten uh, a tentacle that strikes at my foes. As a bonus action, I create a 10 foot long tentacle at a point you can see within 60 friggin' feet of you. This you tentacle it. lasts for one minute. You can use this feature to create another tentacle, which I might. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to uh, tentacle the crap out of this. All right, make, Let's a see. make, your, make your tentacle attack. <gasps> ah! By the way, that is Natural bad. 20 plus 10! Jesus. All right, <laughs> All right. That hit. All right. good start um, for Lydia. Uh oh. Yeah, Lydia. Uh, Let's go! Yeah, Let's go! All right, go ahead. And so what we do, what we do on this show is uh, for natural twenties, we we have you just do max damage. So what is what is the damage rule for that attack? Oh, uh, so max damage for this is um, a one d eight plus four. Two d eight. Uh, yeah, because you were yeah. you were level ten or above, so it's two d eight plus four, yeah. so that's going to be twenty total, uh, and that is cold damage. You said. Uh, so that is. Uh, let me double check. I believe that is cold damage. All my stuff okay. is cold damage. <gasps> okay. Um, ooh, 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 okay. Ooh, ooh. Um, okay. Spells are really cool. <laughs> yep, it seems to only take about half of that, um, but it Damn. does take damage. So so it takes ten more points of damage. All right. Is there anything else that you can do on your turn? Uh, let me look because that was my I bonus. Yeah. I think you can't do multiple attacks it. if you did. Yeah. No, I think that's it. But yeah. God, I want to do more. I feel yeah. like Wait, Danielle. Sad. Can you see why I picked? Can you see why I picked this warlock subclass for you? Anyway, uh, all right. I feel so um, full of power. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, and now it is Zindar's turn. Zindar, you are currently inside of the Storm Cricket. So I'm inside, and I'm like, uh, so like restrained doesn't actually mean like you're paralyzed or anything like that. So like he just can't move from inside, and he's like going into his bag, going, I don't know why I did this, but I am regretting my actions right now. <laughs> um, and I uh, get a, um, uh, actually get my finger 
uh, ooh, um, I, there's this concoction I kind of make inside really quickly, and I get my finger, and on my chest, um, I draw a rectangle shape, and I put a dot on the um, left center of it, and then as I press my hand against it, I whisper in Celestial as I cast Dimension Door and okay. get out of there. Mm. Oh, good for you. All right. <laughs> um, and I am going to appear over here. <laughs> Where are you at? Sorry, I didn't see you. Okay. Uh, you do not a like you did yourself, right? while you're at it. <laughs> wait, wait. Can, can, can I ask a question that I feel is somewhat obvious? Yeah. Is Zindar poisonous? He should uh, feel slightly <laughs> likely, right? Should be. Well, uh, uh, what I can tell you is that don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> all right, um, yeah. All right. Um, um, and, and I, um, uh, my apologies. So when I did that, I whispered to myself, using the inner magic of my my mother um, to fuel this spell. As I am a meta magic initiate. Uh, as one of my feats. Nice. Because, and I changed that into a bonus action. Nice. Okay. Um, so what's your action, Magic Boy? My action is taking the Zam staff and going, that really hurt! Uh, and pointing it at the uh, Kraken. This thing is a Kraken. This yep. one skill is probably its best skill, but I'm doing it regardless. As I try to curse this some bitch okay. uh, with my staff of the serpent. Um, so and it needs say, to make a con save. Okay. Uh, Lydia looks at Xandar is like, holy crap, you're like really good at this. Who okay. are you? And I guess... Con save with, uh, <laughs> like, oh no, no, oh, we have too many people. Oh, <laughs> I'm an emissary of a... Like, who cares? It's fine. <laughs> you're yeah, like his so mom, good. His, his, his mom's a god, so you're probably going to start meeting each other about all the god yeah. hangout. So just like, you might as well be nice oh, to him. Jesus. All right. Um, all right. Uh, unfortunately, Zindar, uh, what is your spell save DC for this? 21. Unfortunately, I rolled a nat 20 on my constitution saving throw. Of course, of course. brought it up to a 29. So it did, it did save. Um, so I apologize, but your, your curse charge is was gone. was not expected. Um, one, one charge is gone. I thought you had, was it one charge per item? No, that's the, that's the bard spell. Sorry, sorry. No. Uh, Marifine's harp of spells can do one spell, each, each spell once yeah. per day. Cool. All right. Sorry, I got confused which magic items I gave you. All no right. Uh, that uh, is your turn. Wait, do you have anything else you can do in your turn? Uh, yeah, that's my action and bonus action. And I go, ah, okay, maybe it's not working well. You know, and just to make sure, you know, other people are, are you know, in a better spot than me, I'm just going to casually one, two, three, no. Okay. And You're get, in a building, so. Yeah. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to crawl through and just get back here for a second. That's me. Okay. Um, great. All right. Well, you say now... half cover, so I guess I'll stay here. But yeah, we're yeah. good. Yeah. Um, you are, that is your turn. Uh, mm -hmm. it is now the strong Kraken's turn. Um, and I'm going to see what's around it. It looks like the closest thing to it is Callie. That's so right. going to move towards Callie. Bring it on. God, it's so big. It's so big. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. Sure is. It is. And it's, it's smaller than I want it to be, to be fair. To be, like, I know, I know it's not the size of the strong Kraken. It's, it's whatever, but it's fine. Um, so it's going to come up to Cali. It's not the size, it's the motion of the ocean. Yeah, well, the ocean's motion was taking, it's destroying a city. So I feel like that ocean's <laughs> pretty in motion. Um, so Cali, it's going to come up to you and it's going to make a pincer attack on you. All right, let me decide if when it gets in range, if I don't react to it, I have a lot of reactions. Um, it is within range. It's it's a 20 Whenever feet it range. It moves so. into the reach of you. Oh, it's uh, not in your reach. It's 20 feet away from you. So uh, it, it, you are in its reach. You, it is not ew. in your reach. It is not unlike a, a certain a Cyclops that we fought once before. Um, I have to, Callie, does a 36 hit you? I guess. I'm going to stop making that joke every time it happens, but it's very fun for me. I um, guess. All right. Uh, so it's going to make its attack. It's I'll its allow damage. it. Okay. So Callie, you take 16 bludgeoning damage for that first attack. Oh. Mm. Okay, uh, second attack is going to be the tail attack. 38 to hit. Uh, so its damage is going to be... But I mean, also, Callie's a fighter, so you got a lot of hit points that we need to burn through. All right, that's, that's 22 bludgeoning damage to you on its tail attack. And then it's going to swing at you with, those tentac with, that, with that tentacle grasp of itself. And let's see here. And that's going to be a 37 to hit. Um, 
Keep picking that for and, damage. <laughs> nope. Um, and it's going to be 17 damage, and you are grappled. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. Could be worse. Us. 17 damage. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're grappled. So. Okay. Um, all right. And then uh, that is its actions. And then I don't think it has a bonus on this turn, so I'm not going to do that. Um, great. Um, and by the way, all of its attacks are considered magical, just so you know. Um, so there you go. And great. So now uh, that is, I think it's going to continue. It's going to try to move. Um, so it's going to carry Callie. But it's going to move over this way a little bit, so it's kind of actually. I'm going, to, I'm going to leave it where it is for now, just because it's not a very big map. So it does have Callie held in its tentacle, uh, and that is going to be its actions. Now, Callie, it's your turn. It's I your have turn. one stress. Yeah. No, actually, I have one stress. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, it's my turn. Yes. Cool beans. Um. Just looking at my different things. What are my limited uses right now? Uh, da, da, da. Uh, where are my superiority dice? Okay, so I'm grappled. Yeah, so you cannot move. Okay, Ga Kelly would like You're to be ungrappled. Um, so that is what she's going to prioritize. Okay. Um, uh, how does one become ungrappled again? Uh, you need to make a uh, a DC. Uh, you need to make a saving for uh, a strength. Um, God, I'm trying to outstrength strength this thing. A, I do. Yeah, think strength you challenge. Can still oh. attack it if you're grappled. You can still attack it. You just can't move. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you make a strength check. Strength check to, to break the grapple. Mm -hmm. To break the grapple. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to see if I have any special skills that are going to help me get out of this grapple. Hold the line, inevitable. Uh, is it? It's not considered a saving throw, right? No, it's a strength challenge. Yeah. So you just roll your strength, like you just roll your strength okay. on the dice. Uh, okay, no Which is still yes. pretty good because you're a level twenty fighter. So. All right, I think that's what I'm going to do then. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna. You said okay. just just straight strength. Straight strength. All right. It's, just, it's, it's basically a, a skill challenge. It's basically a, to see if your strength can break. The, it's it's hold on. All right, here we go. Wish me luck, everyone. <laughs> all right, I believe in you. Kelly's just gonna uh, she's gonna use all her strength. Uh, uh, I got a nineteen on the dice, so that's a twenty-four. That does not break it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm sorry. So there's no. I don't think I could have broke it then. No, you could have. I, if I would have natural 20 yeah, I would have allowed it on, on, on a natural 20. I would have allowed it, but it would not have been its DC. Um, yeah. But you also have somebody in your party who can cast guidance. Like there are things that can be done to do it, but that is not a thing. Um, all right. So you cannot break free. Uh, that was your strength check. That was your action. Do you want to do a bonus action? Let me see. Um... Oh, it's actually a strength ath athletics check. Oh, okay. Do you have do you have proficiency in athletics? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead and re-roll for me. No, sorry. I, you know what? You rolled 19, already. Right? Just add 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 your modifier for athletics okay. to what you rolled. Okay, so, so nineteen plus. Uh, nineteen plus eleven. So that would have been. You broke free. Yeah, you broke free. I will. Uh, yeah, that was my mistake. So yeah, thank you, Jordan, for looking that up. I appreciate Bless it. Bless you, Jordan. It, it, it did not say that in the. Uh, <laughs> monster description so i was assuming it but thank you i'm sure someone in chat was like it's a story right there. <laughs> so i appreciate the yeah i am i am very tough tonight but i'm fair no um, we're good i like the challenge right. yeah all right so you are you are broken free but that was your action so you won't be able to take multiple attacks on this turn um but you have a bonus action that you can use so callie um pulls out of the grasp of this thing and she is going to um where is it? Where are you on my character sheet? Um, yeah, so uh, so it's like a ten it's one of the tentacles of the creature. Okay. Yeah. I'm at, I'm asking that's what's holding her right now. Well, you broke free of the grapple, so it's not holding you anymore. Well, what she would have liked to do to break free is climb on top of it. I'll let you do that as a free action. I'll, I'll, I'll let you do that as flavor for what you did. So you are currently on its tentacle. Yeah. Yeah. 
for this oh. turn, I will let, if you attack it, it'll drop you. You won't you won't take damage. But for flavor and for the fun of cinematic things, you are currently on top of its tentacle because that that's so cool. I'm not gonna not allow that. So, yay! Um, because what uh, Kelly's going to do is, um, she would like to. Uh, it's a special once per turn if you move ten feet. Because she wants to climb on top of it, like while she's getting out, she's like basically like, I imagine it's like encircled her, and then she's climbing out on top, yeah. and cool. then like as that. she does that, um, she's gonna attempt to charge down the tentacle at it. I will allow that. I will say it's difficult terrain because like it's, you're trying to keep your balance. On she does have her slippers, but it's like shaking around. It's like okay. it's, I mean, it's not it's not just gonna stand there and like let you run up. It and, is like, slippery. It's a bridge. Oh no, totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. So I. I appreciate. I'm giving. I'm giving you. No, a no, no. You're good. Here, so you're yeah. Good, you're good. Um, yeah. I will so, roll. Yes. Yeah. It falls to my death if I have to, but I'm gonna charge. Okay. Um, what I'm gonna have you do is make a athletics check at disadvantage. Okay. This is this is gonna count as your movement, just so you know. So. Okay. Because you already used your action, but I like this so much that I'm letting you do it. So the, that's the first roll. I got a 30 and a 28. Okay, that succeeds. So I will say that you are able to get up to it. So you are now kind of like on the creature. I'll, I'll say that you're able to get up like on its back and like you can run around on the creature itself at this point, so. Um, okay. It was a, it is my ferocious charge. Okay, does that do damage? Uh, it knocks them prone. If Well, they have to do a save. Um, it's a strength. Uh, the target must succeed a strength saving throw or be knocked prone. <laughs> uh, it is actually immune to oh. uh, attack that would do that to it. So you would, you Great. cannot, yeah. Then I charge at it and yeah. I am where you say I am. What yeah. would it be? Where, where do you want to be? Like? Yeah. Uh, um, I'm assuming I just like run straight wherever that tentacle was. Oh, okay. So you're saying, I, I mean, it's say. like a tentacle. Um, like, it's like, it's like, imagine a thing that's like flailing around. It's not just like holding fair. still, like. Like it's not like it's not like a Final Fantasy set like 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 platform. It's like a creature cynical. So I'll say I'll yeah I'll say I'll get up on the back because eventually I'm gonna probably okay. try to get up on its head. Okay, I will let you do that, and that'll be the end of your turn. Thank so, you. Great. All right. Uh, at the the next turn, it is uh, Marifine's turn. But before it's Marifine's turn, it is going to use one of its legendary actions to to make a tail attack to try to hit Callie because there's a creature that is on its back. So it's going to swing that tail and try to swipe you off with its tail. Um, and so that tail attack is going to be a 35 to hit. And it's going to do an additional set of damage to you. It's going to do 23 more damage to you, Callie. All right. And that's magical damage, so it will not be resisted. All right. Uh, great. All right. Uh, that is the end of your, that is the end of, of its legendary action for this turn. Uh, now it is Marifine's turn. Marifine, what you doing? Uh, how do I continue getting power with this magic thing? <laughs> so you're basically holding it. That's like that's basically going to be your action on your turn. That is holding that. But you do have the ability to give your party bardic inspiration as a bonus action if you want to do that. Okay, I'll do that because we need it apparently. Do I, wait, do I have to roll anything for that? No, you're just giving someone the dice. Uh, I think it's within thirty feet of you. Is that correct, or is it more? Oh yeah, Are people near me. Oh. Uh, the person, I'll say that you can give it to Lydia, even though she's not quite in your range, but it's I mean, a big I can move. So. Okay. Yeah, you Am can I move allowed to move feet. while holding the thingy? Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Then I'll you just, just can't move take an action. like here. And I think that'll okay. give more people you, in you, range. You can, you can either give it to Lysandros or Lydia. And you know Lysandros, you don't really know Lydia. So out of care, that's me, table talk. So, but I would say that's, that's my assumption is you would give it to the person that you know who's right yeah, there. Yeah, Lysandros. I'll give it to I'll take him. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I feel inspired. Eat. Great. All right. Uh, speaking of Lysandros, it is now your turn. Oh, boy. Okay. So Lysandro sees uh, uh, Callie getting all tentacle whipped by this thing and climbing up on it. And he goes, and, and he kind of turns and goes, Well, I mean, I've practiced on smaller people, but I feel like the, the principle is still going to work. And he's going to, lick his finger and kind of go like this <laughs> and have his mage hand just go into the ear of the Kraken 
and just wiggle around inside of it for a little while. Is uh, that a help action you're doing? What I am doing here is using the uh, the ability of the arcane trickster, which is versatile trickster. At 13th level, I gain the ability to distract targets with my mage hand, and as a bonus action on my turn, I can designate a creature within five feet of the spectral hand created by the spell, and doing so gives me advantage on attack rolls against that creature until the end of turn. Okay. So it doesn't say anything about size. I hate everything size. about this. I hate <laughs> everything about this. Yeah. Ha ha! All of my practice has paid off. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't think it actually has ears, but I'm going to let you have this anyway. Uh, you, yeah. you, you found you found an orifice somewhere. <laughs> it, it, it pokes around. Crazy! It's <laughs> thrown off somehow. Oh my god. I knew what I was doing, Danielle. <laughs> the important part here. Um, so, and, and then Lysandrus is going to be like, when in doubt, throw a rock at it. And he's going to flip around the side and just whip out his two birds uh, sling and just fling a rock okay, go at ahead the make thing's big old eye. Make your Man, so I, I am rock rolling with... <laughs> I'm throwing a rock at a kraken. Uh, but it's a so magical I... rock. It is a magical rock. It's a rock! Those freaking rocks. rocks. So I have advantage, so I'm going to roll twice. May I remind uh, you that, that Lysandra has killed the big leader of the water elementals with those rocks. So. Yes! <laughs> so... <laughs> I rolled uh, a natural 20 right oh, off the bat. So I'm not even going to roll gosh. the second time. See that right yeah. there? That's a 32 total. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay, what's your max damage for that attack then? Well, my max damage is, uh, so the two bird sling itself. Oh is, no. Uh, oh, what do you have? You have, you have. Uh, sneak attack because you're part of sure do because you're I your sure do engage with it. Bloosh, yeah. bloosh, bloosh, yeah. bloosh, what, bloosh, what, bloosh. Yes. what level so of that's damage? 12 is damage it? from the sling, okay. and then a uh, a humble 60 damage from my sneak attack, which is oh now 10 d6. God, hang on, hang on. So yeah, yeah, minus yeah. 12, and then uh, and then minus right. 72 damage. <laughs> Oh my god. Can you paint this picture of this pebble flying and hitting this kraken for us? And and it, here's the fun thing because I this is a David and friggin' Goliath as a precedent that I did set at this table when when Lysandros attacked the water elemental that was so big, I let him make a second attack on the same creature with his two bird sling. So Lysandros, go ahead and make your second attack roll to have the rock bounce off the crack and hit it again. I mean, this one's going to be much more low key because I yeah, can't this get one, this one, this one, this one, you're not going to take attack on it. And the most you can do is 12. But I'll tell you, if I do hit, it's just like that little extra. Yeah. Like fun. It's kind and of funny to me that Callie hasn't done any damage on this creature yet. And <laughs> she's like your yeah, she's your damage dealer. <laughs> so I rolled an 18 with plus 12. That's 30. Does that hit? It hits. Yes. What? Great. Um, in that case, I am then uh... going to do uh, eight extra damage to it, which puts me at a nice clean, even 80 damage this attack. Great. Wow. <laughs> All right, that is uh... splish, 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 splish. <laughs> again water guns. Sorry, <laughs> L- L- Lysandros's uh, uh, invisible mage hand finger goes into this thing's orifice of some sort and messes around, and the thing just turns and turns. And Lysandros like waits for the perfect moment, and when he sees one of its eyes like turn towards it, he just goes, "All right, there we go." Whoo! Whips a rock, and it just goes right in through the pupil of the eye. <laughs> oh, I love it, it goes, so much. Shoop, and bounces around inside the eye of the Kraken. Ah. <laughs> uh, the eye of the Kraken. All right. Uh, that is, is that your turn? You know, uh, I am then going to use a bonus action. Oh, my God. Of course hide. you are. <laughs> okay, yeah, I would if I were you, too. That's a good call. Yeah. You go ahead and make it. Your, hits go, it ahead and go. Ah. go ahead and make your stealth. Go ahead, go ahead and make your stealth roll to see how well you're hidden. Because this thing has got your number right now, so. Okay. Uh, my stealth, my stealth is <laughs> an eight, but I am going to use my luck reroll because okay. that is a thing I can do, and I will use a luck boom. I have and... a random question. Did I have the roll again for my delayed fireball? 
No, because you don't roll for it. Oh, okay. It's just you're charging it up basically. Every round that you charge it is one more attack damage it can do when it's time to throw it. Oh, okay. Okay. And it, I got that, that a... spell, Joy. It you're not rolling to attack, it's rolling to dodge it. So oh, okay. yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I rolled a fourteen a nineteen total on that. That was the hide? Okay. Yes. Let me just let me just see how if it perceives you and make a perception oh, my check stealth. for it. Yeah, it rolled a two, so it lost yeah. you. I think I think it's too easy to go on like what's uh, <laughs> it's got a rock so, in its eye. There's a yeah, rock. You are not eye. perceived. It's got a rock in its eye and a magic hand in its orifice. So <laughs> it is not it is not noticing what caused it. All right. Uh Lydia, your turn. Oh Christ. Uh uh oh uh oh Vasa um Vasa um okay uh who so Lydia is like super psyched with how well everyone's doing and and she is fully um she is the worst person and so she's totally like yeah this is because of me well I did this. Here, you did you did kind of untwist that that jar a little bit so <laughs> you know like, not, not going to your, look, not go to your look, head but uh, did some damage if this was an that. Instagram picture it would be like you know I love all of them so much I t untwist pickle jars for them like I do other things for them like that would would be what this is okay I want to what haven't I done yet like, Xander <gasps> just got swallowed and this random water lady coming up I for like know. I'm doing all this not gonna happen. Not happening. I'm also an emissary of Thassa, and also kind of like me and Thassa. I I'm a son of a goddess might... as well. So I mean, who's better? The person well, who works I mean, for her and I, the person well, I'm who. A, I, I'm I will say, I will say Lydia, Lydia does call her goddess mommy sometimes. So I think there's like something going on there. So <laughs> me, me, me and Thassa have like a whole thing. I won't get into it because it's, it's, it's a little one-sided. It's, it's, it's a little one-sided, but it's yeah. a little one-sided. Jesus, but, but she allows it. Um, Girl, what you doing? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what I'm doing. All right, so <laughs> I think it would be really fun since we're actually doing really well right now. I think I want to cast. Oh, we're doing okay. I think I want to yeah. cast um, Eldritch Blast. Okay, you get um, to make four separate attack rolls for this. Oh, I know! Uh, so, a beam of crackling energy streaks toward the creature within range. So I make a ranged spell attack, which I'm also a rogue, which is weird because I have all of these spells now. And I'm nice. like, basically like a great water goddess. Um, on a hit... What, it, what, is your, what does your Eldritch Blast look like? What do you, how, do you, how do you picture Lydia's Eldritch Blast appearing? Well, Lydia is the cutest little dummy. And so Lydia, like, raises her hands up because Lydia is still, um, Lydia is still in awe of her mentor, Sophia. And so she Aww. thinks of what Sophia, come on, she thinks of what Sophia would have done in this moment. And she's Aww. like, I raise my hands at you, creature, and I command you to what? I command you to what? Uh, something. It's been a hundred years. Uh, something. Uh, lightning! Lightning! Okay. So these they're, lightning! these blasts of lightning uh, come streaking out of you. So go ahead and make your four attack rolls for me. All right. So oh meow meow. Uh, so. <laughs> To hit a 24? 24 hits. Okay, well, let's do these four attack rolls then. Yeah, go ahead and roll all the attacks, and then I'll have you roll all your damage at once to save time. Uh, 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 14. 14 does not hit. Wait, no, no, no. You're rolling damage right now? Not oh. to hit. Oh, 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 oh. So oh, the 14, right. the 14 uh, was the first damage. Okay, I will, I will go ahead and, and take that damage just to make it easier. So minus 14, great, okay. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll your second attack. Oh, my second attack. Oh, geez. Yeah, because uh, so Eldritch Blast at this se level uh, 17. four beams. 17 does not hit. Okay, Damn roll it. your roll your third blast. Damn it, 19. 19 does not hit, sorry. Uh, and your last Come one. on, come on, come on, baby. 25? 25 hits. Okay. So yes! Roll your damage to that last one. Nine. 
Eh, we'll do what hey, we can do. It's better than nothing. All right. So uh, it's very right. much like a like, I command you, my powerful uh lightning or whatever, uh, to smite the tentacles or I don't know, guys. Um, uh, to smite you with my awe inspiring Tassa powers. Yeah. <laughs> you do all that and then you kind of just like throw your arms forward and four beams hey. of of what looked like lightning, they're actually doing force damage, but they come flying out of you, and they um, two of them, pew, two, pew, of them pew, two of them kind of bounce off a part of its carapace, doesn't do any damage to it, but two of them hit enough on its like soft and fleshy parts, do some damage to it. Uh, it does take all of that damage, uh, so you know it is not it is not a, it is not resistant to force damage. Um, so that is good information for y'all to have, and uh, that is your action. Do you have a bonus action you'd like to do? God damn right I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for my, let's go over to my bonus actions, b -b -b baby. I'm I'm going to do Tentacles of the Deeps again because that's like really the only bonus action that I have. It's really yeah, go good. for it. Uh, so I'm going to do Tentacles of the Deep again. Uh, so again, uh, Baby Cakes rises this 10 foot long tentacle that everyone can see within 60 feet. Um, and when I create this tentacle, uh, uh, hold on, I gotta. Uh, make sure you mark think. off the one you already use because those, those are limited. So make sure you mark uh, off the one. Know. But, but, but a note, it is basically like the warlock spiritual weapon. You do not need to keep recasting it. It is there until you take it away. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, it's a bonus action. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already, the, the spirit, the, the, the tentacle is there and you can swing it around. Oh, yeah, can, yeah, I give not, it a, yeah, can, I, can I give it a secondary tentacle? Uh, no, only one can go at a time. Okay, well then, oh gosh, there's no way yeah. to do when it says When it says you can use that to create another one, it means if it gets a spell, you can make another one come out of it. There's no way to do this. It isn't disgusting. So the tentacle, oh gosh, darn it. There's a lot of ways to do this. Just jabs in and out. In and out and in and out. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel like you. I don't feel like you had to do it that way. Uh, go ahead. Uh, 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 so, uh, oh wait, hold on. Uh, 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 that is Danielle. I am going to ask you to please stop yelling into your microphone, please. Oh, Thank sorry, you. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank um, you so much. So that uh, to hit is a twelve. Uh, twelve does not hit. So the tentacle Damn. tries to go in and out and in and out and in. Uh, like mama and its squeeze box. All oh my long, god! But it does not Sorry. does not happen. Uh, it's a tentacle. This creature just kind of like it uses its own tentacle to kind of like push it away. Like it's I got. And those. also thank I'm you. Not, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna I'm oh. gonna turn down my gain. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I do want to say. No, you know what? It's 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 your decision. It's your choice. It's your uh, responsibility for y'all to track them. So I'm not going to tell you how many rerolls you have. Um, all right. Uh, oh, we're currently have four rerolls for the table, just so you know. All right. Um, and before we move on to Zendar's turn, before I miss it, I do want to say we have one more uh, message from the gods. The message from the god uh, Latia Jaquis, who says, "Love to the saving throw show crew." From Latia, thank you so much for that. Aww, that's really we really appreciate you. Oh, thank, thank you. Latia. Thank you so much. I hope I, I hope I said your name, your last name properly. Latia, Latia uh, yeah, yeah. Jaquis was always okay. Cool, got it. Cool. Uh, all right, great. Uh, Zindar, it is your turn. Um. All right. Um. Uh, so I will. I, I mean, it, it's it's the epic battle, and I have to get it. So I'm yeah, gonna you're keep trying it until it. it doesn't. Uh. Well, it's not bad. It's that uh, I'm trying something against the one thing it might not work against. Oh, you're gonna um, curse I'm okay. going to try, I'm going to try to curse it again. I got to. Okay. It's the last yeah. battle with this thing, that and that's curse. its ultimate thing. Yeah. So that's my okay, action. It's a it's a wisdom save. No, it's a con save. Con <laughs> save. Okay. Um. Con. Uh, it got an eighteen. What's your DC? Oh, 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 21! No. Hey. <laughs> Wait, was that eighteen on the die, or was that eighteen overall? Eighteen overall. Oh. Curse, curse, curse. <laughs> um, so as I point my staff at it, uh, I guess like I'll go, um, mom, uh, I don't know if you made this thing or not, but please help. Um, and I guess picture it kind of pulsing with the uh with these snakes around it starting to coalesce as now it is touched by um decay and rot. Uh, uh you see it shake that off and use one of its legendary resistances to pass that check. No, so it is. Is 
it is shrugged off. It has two of those left. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> sorry. I, I was going to say it, but then you kept going. I'm like, oh, I'm going to break. I'm going to break the little heart, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's rude. I know. I know. I told you it's going to be a mean monster. <laughs> That's rude. I know. I know. I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry because I think it's kind of fun, but I also know I'm sorry. That's rude. As, as, as someone who plays, I know how heartbreaking that is, but that is what's happening. <laughs> That has, yeah. Okay, okay. You regret that, yeah. Um yeah, I, I, I will. I, know I, will. I will um, notice that, and I go, really? And I'm going and to actually. Yeah, I would say it should have had. It should have had advantage on the on the saving throw anyway, and I didn't give it that. But I will still burn the legendary resistance. So. Did it have advantage against? Yeah, I've actually been. Uh, I've actually been not rolling advantage on. It's supposed to have advantage on saving throws against all spells, and I have not been. Uh... Oh, that's not a spell. That's a. Um, that's an effect from the staff. Okay, it's still yeah. okay. Cool. Yep, yep. Um, yeah. Um, and actually, uh, from now on, I just realized I missed this information, but I'm not going. So I'm not going to retroactively do it. But moving forward, anyone who makes a spell attack against it has disadvantage on the attack roll. Just so you know. Shit. Yeah. So you're what you're saying right now is Zendar has nothing against this person. All right, it's cool. <laughs> um, um, I did the, the you're book, not even poisonous. Come on. He he uh he gets annoyed at this thing for saving. What is going on? You <laughs> stop it. Uh, and he what he does is he uh takes out his book from um his um his his recipe book and he looks at it and goes ah. I'll save the pages later. And he grabs a vial of this weird clear liquid and he pours it on top of it. And as he closes the book and puts it back into the um, his bag, there's a spectral form that appears. And I use my manifest mind bonus action. Um, and it actually appears right next to you might have. To, can you put on Dari? And I'll just use Dari yeah. as the uh, the oh. mind. I'm not really going to use Dari right now. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, uh, where do you want? Where do you want him at? Um, like right here. Okay, right here is fine. Cool. Um, uh, if you can't move him, let uh, I'll have Dom give you act control yeah. of him, but you should, uh, should be able to. I cannot. Uh, okay, Dom, can you so get yeah. uh, control Dari to? Uh... Thank you. Um, right now it's not Dari; it is the mind of of yeah. of my book. Um, and I say, I think I, can, I think I can give it to you. Let me see here. Uh, just, just, just stay there for a fit, bit. I got it. Thank you. Um, yeah, cool. just, just okay. stay there for a bit. And then I'm also going to. Wait. Yes. Uh, I'm going to get there. Cool. Um, and that is what I do. Okay. It is now the Storm okay, Kraken's turn. No. I'm going to put Callie on the Storm Kraken since she's kind of writing it. All right. Where are you at? Okay. Sorry. I was I, I checked feet wrong. I You're was fine. like, wait, I'm doing something. I'm actually here. There we go. Okay. Sounds good. Um, cool. All right. I will allow you to be there. All right. So that makes sense. All right. Storm Kraken's turn. Storm Kraken on its turn uh, is going to try really hard to deal with Callie again. Um, so when the for the storm kraken's attacks, real quick, um, you said they're magical, but they're not considered like casting a spell. They're just magical. No, it means it, it is magical damage. So okay. that means like it, like so, if someone is resistant to bludgeoning, for example, they wouldn't be because it's magical bludgeoning. So. Oh, okay, gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Good thing. Good question to ask if you weren't sure. Um, I'm gonna say based on where you are, it cannot get you with its pincer attacks. Um, because it would be trying to like get on its own back to do it. Uh, but I do think it can swip its tail and tentacles around. Um, so first attack is going to be a tail attack to get at you. And that's going to be a uh, 28 to hit. I think, and, okay. I think what Callie's going to do, since she like, obviously no one's going to be with her right now, she is going to do her warding maneuver. Okay. Um, as a reaction, uh, where she's going to, um, try to like protect herself while she's on the back until she can get to a position to like get in there with the ax. Um, okay, so that raise, does that raise your AC? Yeah. She's going to okay. try to raise her AC, uh, but she, I'll take this hit obviously. Okay. So, uh, that does hit you for 20. It, it, it was 28, two hits, and then it does 22 bludgeoning damage to you. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, and then uh, for its next attack, um, it is going to try again to get you that tentacle grass. So go ahead and make your warding maneuver if you want to do that. All right. So I get a plus eight to my um, AC. So that's, I get uh, 26 is my AC right now. You got a 37. And if it still hits, and if it still hits um, I have resistance against its attack damage, but by eight. Okay, so it did. Hang on, is it is this attack twice with that? Um, no, I don't know why it's 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 showing two damages, but it really should. It's only one, so I don't know why it's doing that. Um, all right. Um, the tentacle hit you for thirty-seven. It did twenty-one bludgeoning damage, which you take eight. So you soak eight of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's only going to be what's that? Uh, that's thirteen. Yes. So take 13 bludgeoning damage and you were grappled again. So it, it pulls you up off its back and now it has you in its grapple. Um, and then uh, because it can't get you with its with its carapace or with its pincers, it's going to go to the the person who did damage it again recently with the with the Elder's Blast. So Lydia, it's going to make a pincer attack at you. Ah, piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just going to pince that out. All right, uh, and then that is a natural 20 uh, and. Oh. Yeah, and so, but uh, I'm just for saving of time. I'm just gonna use the what what roll twenty told me the damage was for that. Um, so you won't get max damage hit. So you're lucky for that. Um, so instead, it did uh, uh, nineteen plus seven. So it's gonna be that. That's gonna be twenty six of uh, bludgeoning damage to you, Lydia. Oh, thank God. All Ooh. right, and then um, it's gonna start. No, I'm not going to make it move. There's no reason for it. All right. Um, so that is going to be its turn. All right, Callie, it's your turn. All right. I'm grappled. Yeah. Callie's just going to attack it at this point. She needs okay. to get, she has that ox. She needs to do some damage. Okay. Uh, so yeah, she's going to, yeah, grab the ax. Just, all right. We're not doing this anymore. And she's just going to, Try to bring it down. Okay. Let's see. I'm using a reroll. That was a natural one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, rerolls. Thank you, rerolls. Thank you, rerolls. Oh my gosh. What? Why? I rolled another natural one. Oh no, I'm sorry. All right, that's not gonna hit. Um, okay, uh, that's your first attack. You get multiple attacks, right? Yeah, I get four, but like, oh my gosh, I'm rolling with real dice. Get them out now, yeah. With real dice, cause no. Okay. That's a 19 on the dice, plus 12 is math. Uh, it hits. 19 right. plus 12 will hit. Yay! Because yeah. uh, you, you, know you know that a 24 and a 25 hit earlier, so you know it's below those two at least. All right. Great. Um, uh, so I'm going to do the first bit of damage, and then I know it gets a bonus because it is, I'm assuming it's a Archon yeah. thing. That, 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 that was why this weapon matters so much for you to get it. Yeah. So if it didn't do it, that would be like, oh, cool. I'm glad we spent the whole adventure <laughs> getting this axe that doesn't work. <laughs> All right. So I bring the axe down. It does. When you fight an Archon, seven. it hurts you back. No. <laughs> How much damage? Uh, So 27. And then I need to do two additional D12. So let's get those out. Uh, D12. Roll. Okay. 27 plus 12, so 30, is that 40? So you, I'm not so you, roll, you roll 12 on this on the, on the other two? Yes. I already took off 27, so I'll take the 12 off now. Great. So minus 12. Yep. Okay. So that was the second attack. Okay. It's looking, it's looking past bloody to hurt. Like, it's definitely taken a lot of damage, but it's still very, very much in this fight. Great. Um. um with that attack, I am going to, um, as, uh, I mark my, I'm going to mark it with my unwavering mark. Okay. So that one definitely. What does that uh, do again? Uh, unwavering mark. It says, um, if I hit it with a melee weapon attack, I can mark the creature and until of m the end of my next turn, uh, while it's within five feet of me. 
a the marked creature has disadvantage on any attack roll that doesn't target me. Oh, um, interesting. Okay. If the marked creature deals damage to anyone but me, I can make a special melee attack against it um, on my next turn as a bonus action with advantage and plus 10 extra damage. Okay. Good to know. Yes. All right. Attack number two or three, 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 three. Rolling with the dice here. I put a mark on it. Where'd it go? Oh, that's not very good either. Um, five. Uh, how many? Oh, it's I'm just gonna... so big that I can't see the mark on it because it's like up in the corner. It's really tiny. Uh, if, if the team's okay, I'm going to use another one of those re rolls. Hell yeah. So we should have. That's what they for. You have three left. Three left. Oh, not just one. Hey, okay, this is going to be pretty nice. So, uh, how much damage do you? Okay, so you get to do how many d6s with that? So, what, uh, what is sorry. the normal for the roll? No, congratulations. Uh, uh, what's the normal roll for that? Um, one. It says one d12 plus six. That can't oh, are you, are you are you not using your? No, accident? I am. I think it's reading wrong. Hold on. Uh. Because whatever you just you did it a second ago. Um, yeah, for some reason it says damage one d12 plus six, but when I'm reading on it, it says you gain plus one bonus attack damage. Oh, and... so it's one d12 plus six plus two d two d12 after that. So. Oh, um, I see. So it's three d12 plus six. Oh uh, wait, no. So it's um because it's okay. So it's three d12 plus two d12. That's how I don't know why it's saying one d12. That's a weird D and D beyond. Yeah. Thing, but in the actual okay. text for the axe that's there. Okay, so it does. Five okay, so. 5d12, so that is, that's 60, right? So 60 damage to it. Yes, it is. Okay. Mm. I mean, it's no 80 damage, but... <laughs> <laughs> Not all yeah, of them have special but rocks. To be, but to okay. be fair, she also already did it, like, for a bunch of damage, the previous attack, same the same round. This so. is fair. And I have one more attack. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm. She's, yeah. <laughs> all right, and we're going uh -huh. again. Yeah. Uh, we currently have two re two re rolls left. Just thank so you, know. you re rolls, by the way. That could not have been been possible without you. So, um, yeah. So she brings that one down, uh, and uh, she's trying to chop this tentacle off. <laughs> and uh, she's like, "All right, one more. Twelve plus twelve is twenty four. Plus one, I get a plus one. Okay, great. Uh, so we'll do that again. Roll all the dice." And then we roll two more dice. So that's 34. And then I roll my other two. Yeah, I'll do it all at once this time so we don't get confused. So 34 plus... 34 plus 15. So that's 49. Yep. Okay, great. Uh... So yeah, she brings that last one down. And she's like, come why on! I, why did I give you this stupid axe? It seems like bad for my monsters. Um, all right. And then you do you get one more? Uh, is, that, is that all of your attacks? Well, that's a great question. Because That's why I asked it. It would be my last one, but are you gonna? Oh, I'm gonna axe and shirt. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> Hell course yeah! Course. Action surge, baby. So Callie now finally feeling the uh, rage of battle, but not raging the uh, the uh, uh, endorphins of battle. Axe and surges, and she's gonna do it all again. Uh, so let's roll. Oh, why did all I right. roll on here? Oh, I rolled a two. Ah. Sorry. Yeah, it doesn't hit. <laughs> I believe in you. All right. Rolling this dice again. I believe in you. It is cursed. Second attack. Is it natural 20? <laughs> hey, there you go. So that's that's another. We, did, we said 60. it was 60, right? Yeah. Okay. That's a natural looking 60. pretty messed up. Yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right. Um. All right. Attack number three. Is 15 plus 12, so like 27 plus my one. It hits. It hits. You know, you know it's above. You know it's. You know yeah. it's at least 24 or lower than 24. And then let's get those other two in here. Wait, why did you just? Oh, it just, just, roll, just roll five d12. You'll be good. Oh, I see. Instead of hitting that button. Yeah. I want to kiss that cat. <laughs> she loves me. Uh, so that was um, 12 plus 22, I think. Was that, or no, that was way later. I'm so sorry. My thing isn't loading. 
what did it show for all those dice? It didn't show me. It, it didn't show on my end. They went in, in okay. the game beyond seeing it. I'll just re-roll it. Well, if someone's in the campaign at the end beyond, they can probably see it. But It didn't show me. Okay. Uh, I'm not, I I don't, because oh, I'm not wait. a character in the uh, campaign. I do have it. Oh, um, good. Oh, wait. Is it 13 plus 9? Yes. Great. Uh, So 22? No. 22? Yeah. 22. Okay. Wow. Callie, you messed this thing up. Yeah. All right. Um, is that is that your turn? I think I have one more left. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> so, last one. Why did I Why did I give you this axe? All right. Oh, thank you. Okay. Good luck. Oh, it's a two. That's okay. We're good. We That's we're happy. Okay. So yeah. Yes. Uh, and then yeah. do I have any bonus actions? Oh my god. I hope you don't. <laughs> uh, no, they are just ones to like scare them. Okay. Yes, Callie. Kelly is done. She pa I yeah, it's actually her. immune to being frightened, so I'll tell you that. Like, yeah. I guess I should have told her that, but yeah, just so it's not waste your turn. Uh, I guess we're getting, we're getting close to the time, and I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to get at least one more finger in. Uh, Mara Fine, I would say this is probably the best time Yeah, to I was going to unleash it oh. because you keep rolling high rolls, so at this point, I don't think it's going to do anything anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Well, I mean... It's it's a it's a spell attack. So even if it even if I save on it, it still does half the damage you cast it. So mm -hmm. so you you charged it up for two rounds. So I think you get to roll. Okay, so you're go ahead and so go ahead and okay. Let me let me let me try to do the save. One second here. Wait, it has resistance to spells. Yeah, not we just have advantage. That out. I thought it was yeah, just advantage. Oh, that, rose, yeah, yeah, that's. Oof. But that's but I did not oh, roll those until now, so that's like a, a mistake that I, I made. I should have let on. it go a long time ago before you figured it out. <laughs> I will take it. Yeah. Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't anybody's. I I was reading it on on the sheet, and I was like, oh, I missed that detail. Um, but honestly, it's fine because we only have a two hour show. So, um, yeah, this this battle would have gone a whole lot longer if we didn't have a two hour show. But uh, yeah, I um, it's so. Okay, delayed class. So, did you cast what? What level did you cast at? Seven. Um, it is. I mean, I could do it. You know what? Higher. Let's, let's, look, this is this is a level twenty fight. Yeah. This is our last game Seventh, of yeah. the campaign. Cast at level nine for me. Can just I? For me. Do I have that option? You do. You do. It is. It oh. is. A, you can, it is. It burn your level nine spell for this. Because you can, and why not? Because what else are you going to use it on? Um, huh. okay. So the base of the spell, at, so at higher levels, so for each level higher, eight or higher, it's another D6. So your base is 14 D6. And then because you held it twice, you're going to roll 16 D6. So okay. go ahead and roll. Uh, you, you can, you can, I, what I would do is, is so hit, Hit the button. Hit the 12d6 button. And then hit that 1d6 button four more times. Is that the one? Is that the one on the side or is it the one like on oh okay, so not the one on the spell. So, so if you go to the spell, it'll it says like the spell. So I would here's what, here's what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. Go go to your main spell menu. Yes, okay? I'm looking at it. Go all the way out, go click on where it says ninth level. So like at the very bottom there. Uh, I just so, have like all or the ninth, and so I'm on the ninth level tab right now, yeah, and I on see the ninth it. Level tab, see where it says delay blast fire. Hit, uh -huh. hit the hit the cast button. Okay. Okay. I did the thing. Okay, there so, it is. There you go. Oh, yeah. So, and then go ahead and then um, click click on the actual description of the spell. Okay, I have the little side thing up. Okay, so you see there it says. If at the end of your turn the beat is not yet detonated, damage increases by one d six. Uh huh. Yep. Hit, I think hit so. that hit that that button next to the one d six four more times for me. The one d six four more times. I see cast yes. spell slot and I see cast on. It. I think that says these are blending together because it's so small. Yeah. I'll just do it real quick, just so we can move on. Sorry. Yeah. Um, sorry. <laughs> that's, no, it's fine. It's it's a it's a confusing thing. It's a very high level spell. Okay, okay, so, okay, so <laughs> total, total between all of these, okay, so your your spell save is, is 18. Let me go ahead and make its resistance so we can find out how much is happening here. Uh, let me go ahead and roll its saving throw, and then the... Probably going to be a natural 20. 
the saving throw, it's a dexterity saving throw. It is not proficient in dexterity, so that's good news for you. Oh. Um, let me go ahead and make that saving throw. It was a 19. Yours was 18, so it does resist. However, so we have 55. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. No, no, no. It, it does more damage, so you're fine. So you did, okay, so you did 55 plus 4 plus 6 plus 5 plus 1. That is 71 damage divided Ooh. by 2. So it's half of that. It's still 30 six damage that you just delivered. Ooh, I did things. <laughs> and and that, that is fire damage. It is it is not immune to I mean I'm it 36 damage. Um so it is still up but it is very close to the end. So Marfine you just did a massive amount of damage this thing for I did the I told you I yeah, yeah you did. did yeah you did yeah. yeah making crab boil let's go all right, oh, we are. That is Marifine's turn. Uh, is there anything you want to do as your bonus action in your turn, Marifine? Do you want to give anybody else bardic inspiration since you're? Uh, am I? Let me look at the map again. Uh, like Santa's already has it. Okay. Um, um, I'm close enough to Xandar. Oh wait, yeah, wait, yeah. whose turn's next? Lysandros. Already, Lysand. Uh, I'm going to trust a stranger and give it to Lydia. Okay. Her turn. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I think it makes sense. Because her turn. She seems yeah. like she's generally on our side, right? Yeah, she pew pewed a few oh. things. <laughs> okay, uh, and I just I just remember that Callie did not uh, break the grapple at the in her turn, so uh, it's going to use all three of its legendary actions to swallow Callie. So Callie is now inside the uh, the dragon. Mm. Uh, all right, uh, that is going to be. Uh, your whole turn, and then now it is Lysandros' turn. Okay, so Lysandros, seeing Callie get eaten, uh, comes out and grabs his sword, and just like, hey, don't eat my friend! And is going to charge at the thing, and uh, oh, in the meantime, uh, using a bonus action, the hand shoots out of the orifice that it was in, and it's invisible, but you can see a little bit of the gunk that's still on it, and it goes, whoop, and flies into another thing. And just starts keeps wriggling around and keeping this thing. Okay, on so its you, toes. you you have advantage on this attack. Okay. Yes, I do. And then I'm going to run, and I'm and Alexander is going to jump up and just stab his uh, sword of the forge into the kraken. So my attacks are. Uh, I got a three, which is a seventeen. Does not hit. And then my next roll is a uh you know what i'm not even worried about my next roll i just rather hit uh because i have stroke of luck the level oh, you 20 do. rogue thing so instead of even worrying about uh -huh. what i get i'm i'm just going to hit um nice. so he's about to miss and then one of the tentacles like hits his leg and actually re uh aligns the way he was going in he goes oh cool i like nice. that yeah that's fun that's Boom. lucky and just stabs the sword into it. I don't think I get any bonus damage against Archons for this sword, but when when that happens, when you hear that that like stroke of luck, you just hear the faint hint of Phoenix's voice in your ear going, This whole thing is kind of my fault, so I thought I'd do you a solid there. I'm sorry if I my bad. Okay. <laughs> right, um... Lysandros, even going down in slightly slow-mo, just gives the smallest thumbs up. <laughs> it's only for Phoenix to see. Yeah. Uh, All right. So uh, roll your damage. I will roll. Uh, not not going to be as spectacular as last time, uh, but my sword of the forge does fourteen damage. Okay. And then what kind of damage is it? It is whatever the magic of the sword of the forge be. I think it's fire. Here. Oh no! It's I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And then it is. Uh, it is. It is. Barely hanging on, just so you know. Okay, well, then I roll sneak attack, <gasps> which does 40 extra damage. Oh! Ah! Lysandros. Rogues are the best. Rogues are the best. Lysandros. Yes. Please describe for me the death of the Storm Kraken. 
It so, was because of my bardic inspiration. So, uh, <laughs> yes, Lysandros, uh, uh, in, inspired by Marfine's thing, goes, uh, just like leaps through the air and comes down and the thing turns just because like the way the, it was being wet willied the whole time and it turns and it looks right at Lysandros and it's giant eye is right in front of it. And I go, whew, bad decision. And Lysandros just goes, foom, and disappears into the eye of the Kraken. And Skull then, for initiative, thanks for the raid. Sorry, go ahead. And then a second later, you just see his sword poke out of the eye hole and go, <laughs> <laughs> and it cuts his way out. And Lysandros pulls himself out, and just a torrent of Kraken gunk comes out after him. And goes, <laughs> oh my God! Oh, oh gods! Oh gods! Why? <laughs> And he spills out onto the ground. And a bunch of Kraken guts follow him out. Incredible. And that's it. That is the defeat of the Storm Kraken. Uh, due largely to two very powerful weapons that were given to you. And also some pretty good magic being cast by your illustrious bard. And, uh, and a little help from the Emissary of the Gods. And... Uh, oh, hi! Some some fun teamwork from everybody. Uh, I will say that Callie does like cut her way out of the mouth of the Kraken. Oh no, actually you don't time. because it has taken so much damage that it coughs you up. Oh, wonderful. Because, yeah, that <laughs> I is thought it. you were gonna be like, no one, you're dead. <laughs> no, no one, no, no one, uh, no one did enough damage while anyone was inside of it to make that happen during the actual rounds because uh, Zindar dimension doored out of it and you never went inside until now. But yeah, 50, if it, does 50, it takes 50 damage on a turn, it spits it back out again. So, um, so as, as I, but I like to imagine that, that Lysandros comes pulling you, when, he, when Lysandros comes yeah. out of you with a sword, I think he has you with him. So Zindar, Kali, and Lysandros are, are both just covered in, gra in Kraken. You smell disgusting stuff. for weeks. <laughs> I, I you take smell like the sea. I, I take some of that gunk and put it in it. Um, of vial. course, you of do. course you do. Of course Obviously. you do. Uh, I'm trying to. I, I wish I knew what that does for you, but uh, we'll find out someday. Um, yeah, that is uh, that is that battle. Now let's. Uh, we have a little bit of time left. We're getting close to the end, but that was a pretty big victory, and I want you all to be able to take a victory lap. Um, so, let us all go round and round each character and I want you to tell me what you think happens with this character from here on out. Uh, just like a real quick, I just want like a nice little parting shot for each of your characters. Uh, let's start with our guests. Let's start with Lydia. Where What, where, what happens yeah. to Lydia following this battle? Oh, geez, that's very nice. Uh, uh, so Lydia continues to be Thassel's um, emissary and uh, Lydia is very much in the Urkel mode, but not in the creepy way where it's just like, I think she wears Thassa down. Um, <laughs> she has been working on this. They have been like, she has taken over for obviously her Mentisethia um, for the last 100 years. She has been worshiping in a very inappropriate way. Thassa for like 175 years, probably. Um, and so finally, if not more, yeah. <laughs> if not more um, one day, Thassa was like, yeah, okay. And then they totally made out and it was amazing. All right. I think, I think then Thassa also like, she like lets you go like afterwards, but in a way that's like, She's acting like she's doing you a favor. Like, I, I just want you to be able to, like, live your life and be... And you, you get to have it, and you're like, well, no, I want to hang out. And she's like, no, no, it's fine. Like, I don't want you to be tied down to Nyx and my God. Go ahead and go. And so Lydia is returned to the realm to live out the rest of her mortal life. And that was a uh, 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 that was the kindest one-night stand every, anyone has ever done for anyone. <laughs> Love it. Uh, and then Lydia... I'm sure Lydia eventually finds a young... Uh, Nick's born uh, named Salipso, who has a ship that Lydia might find vaguely familiar. Uh, uh, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, and then uh, let's go. Let's go uh, next to Lysandros. How do you so, wrap up? 
Lysandros, the first thing he does after it's clear the Kraken is dead, is he kind of shakes off a little bit of the gunk and walks over to uh, Xindar and is like, despite what I said earlier, I'm glad you aren't dead. I thought you were eating for that thing there. But uh, yeah, this turned out for the best, right? And then he turns and goes over to Marfine and goes, all right, we've been through a lot. I jumped into a Kraken. Friends? And he holds out a hand to Marfine. Friends. Aww. He shakes Marfine's hand, and then he turns around, and he points at Callie and goes, you owe me dinner. (laughs) (laughs) Dang it. Um, And then after that, after all this is kind of like dealt, Lysandros just sort of spins the next couple of years sort of wandering the world and, and paying off the debts that he's gained up. He kind of does a my name is Earl sort of situation and takes his book of like debts and, and goes around and finds either the people who are owed it now and in some way pays them off and just starts working down his ledger. And it probably takes a while, maybe even the amount of time it took to gain all these debts, it probably will take the rest of the time he has on the plane of Theros to sort of pay them down. But, uh, you know, that's how it works. Uh, you you do that, uh, but you do also find that a lot of the people who are still alive that you owe debts to, or their children, or their grandchildren in some cases, a lot of them don't take your money. Uh, they consider a debt paid, and they're actually just excited to sit and have a drink with you because you are now the slayer of the Kraken. Oh. Uh, and this is the legend of yours that has spread far and wide of the free king who saved the world. Uh, and so it might be frustrating for you because you're like, I kind of want to pay these debts off and you're not allowed to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Zindar. Um, I think that after this is all said and done, um, he does, you know, see the Gorgons to go, uh, not just learn from them, but just see how life is amongst his technically sisters. Um, but I think he kind of goes deep into his work and his craft, even more so um, inspired and ready to figure out what this new meaning means for him. Uh, and I think he does become a, a not necessarily a, an entity or like someone who has immense power to be a god, but definitely does start down that journey of of honing what he is, almost becoming a a a a, a person of rebirth, of creation and destruction with his with his uh artificial ways, creating new things and learning how to whether you use them for good or for whatever the case may be. Um he just kind of thrives. That that that's him. You find yourself surprisingly as someone who has maybe kept to himself a little bit over time because of the fear that people might have for the serpents on your head if they notice them and things like that um you find yourself suddenly being sought out by magic users and healers and and artificers of their own accord a lot of alchemists uh you are a legendary spellcaster amongst the people of this this plane now and they all seek you out to learn from you and follow Fina, F- 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 Farika uh, with you and Farika and for one ev- yeah what's that I would say for every uh, customer or person who learns from him he always as they leave he always gives them a mysterious potion and says you know We'll see what happens with it. He's always experimenting on everyone now. And one day, uh, Farika gives you a vision and lets you have the choice of if you want to continue to exist as you do here on Theros or if you want to join her in Nyx as her emissary. Bye. And you go. All right. Fantastic. I was, I was going to let you leave it vague or decide how you want to do it. But there you go. Boom. All right. <laughs> Not even uh, a second to consider it. Zindar. Yeah. Zindar before the finish. She's like, hey, let's go. Let's go. Come on. All right. Uh, he's always one of the moms. So yeah, he's gone. Bye. Yeah. There you go. Boom. Uh, and your dad's like, I don't forget the rut. Okay. Um, Marifine. Uh, so 
as I agreed to be friends with Lysandros, I also, b before I leave, give him my scarf, which is how I met everybody, and say, if you ever need anything, send this back to me. Because then I eventually finally go back home because I haven't been home since going on the adventure to figure out the Manitar and everything. And then I go home to then have the courage to be able to no longer be outskirt, like be the outskirt family, even though I'm by myself now, but be the person on the outskirts and then take a stand of taking charge of where I belong in the in the town. I like that. Yeah, you, uh, I think that the town, you can tell they feel sorry for the way they treated your family in the past and they try their best to make amends. And not unlike Lysandros, you find yourself having a bit of a hero's welcome um, because you are part of the famed four and with alongside the Emissary of the God that appeared, uh, helped defeat the Kraken and helped save the total destruction of, of Melitus and possibly more of the plane. And a memorial is held to properly honor your grandmother and the other members of your family who were killed in the Minotaur attack. And you are given a position of prominence in the town and allowed to, to do more. And perhaps you, I don't know how serious Marifine is about her uh, crucifix uh, follow, followerness and if she teaches about the horizon and, and wandering to others or not, but whatever she has to offer up, the town wants to hear it. I like and it. And then uh, <laughs> that leaves us to Callie. Callie, what do you do? Hmm. So Callie, she definitely, after being welcomed back to her pride, she she's definitely always been committed to it. That's the whole reason she agreed to go into exile. So she she definitely goes back to her pride, but um, she doesn't. She she definitely goes back changed. She she goes back with a new perspective. And she decided to take that perspective and share it with her pride. And she, I think over the years, she has committed to trying to help them be more open-minded. And although she doesn't, she still doesn't like the gods and she, her, her mindset is always, you know, they are up to no good and they cause us more harm than good. Um, she believes that knowledge is power and instead of closing out the world and protecting themselves that they're better off opening themselves up to the world and helping each other against the gods. And so she's been working with her pride on doing that and reaching out to other cities and trying to organize that. And she's kind of taken the lead in that uh, branch, as you would say, in her pride, I think. I like that. And I think that you make a, you know, you are the truth of what happened with you is, is shared with the pride and folks like including your father uh, realize their error in their ways of shunning you for something that ultimately was, was helping them. And you are given a position of respect and those kind of initiatives that you begin are, are, are welcomed and are, are, are respected. And, you know, you save the world. So you are given a place of respect and we end our story on a rock garden somewhere in the distant hills of Theros where an unknown sculptor has spent their entire life carving visages of the great heroes of Theros. And now the four of you and Lydia are amongst those. And it's a, it's a pretty illustrious list. Um, like Calafia is on there, uh, Sophia. And a certain minotaur and a strange elephant shaped figure as well. <laughs> and we end on a lone figure standing in front of 
those statues. It's a satyr named Lysandros who has a ledger in front of him. And you look down at your ledger, Lysandros, and you have crossed off the last name on your list. And it seems as if you have come to the end of your life's work and possibly your journey. And the last thing we see is a spark. And thank you all very much for tuning in Ooh. for every bit of Dice Ex Machina to Seasons. Thank you all so much for tuning into other shows as well on the Saving Dojo channel. This was really fun for me to run. I've, I've, I've never done an ongoing streaming campaign before, so this has been really exciting to be part of. I just want to say thank you again to all my players. I want to say thank you to Joy and to CB for joining us this season and jumping into the middle of, of a narrative that started without you. I appreciate you having the faith of coming in and joining into a story like that. You've all been really fun to play with. Danielle, thank you so much for coming back twice to help end this story. Uh, oh, Dom, nice. Dom, thank you so much for asking me to do this. This has been a true honor. And now let me go around my table and let my players say goodbye for the end of this show. Let's let's start with our guest, Danielle. Danielle, where can the folks find you? Oh, gosh. Um, I, so I just want to say I have loved you are one of my absolute favorite GMs, DMs to ever work with. Thank you for inviting me back as often as you can. I wish I could have done more this season. Um, I love you. I think you are brilliant. I love working with this cast. Um, I love working with you all. Um, it has been truly one of the best times of my life. Um, so anyway, you can find me at Danielle Radford uh, 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 on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at uh, Danielle underscore Radford on Instagram. Uh, if you like honest trailers, go watch them. They help me get paid. Uh, you can find me on Fandom when I go live all the time. Um, we, <laughs> for Dimension 20, uh, Misfits and Magic, we are doing a, uh, uh, a holiday special, uh, which is coming up. Also, if you're really nosy and you want to see what we've been up to, we all went and got McRibs yesterday, um, so you can so you can find that um, yes. on, on our socials. Uh, that is not yeah. what I thought you were going to say. I thought we were going to go somewhere away. Like, like we got no, we all went. And we, we all didn't went and got, tell anybody. We all yeah. went and got. McRibs I saw the yesterday. McRib post. Yeah. It is the dumbest thing I've ever Love done. It. Is the best. Um, but again, thank you so much, Riley, for trusting me with this, and thank you so much, Dom, with trusting me with this and Broken Pact. And this, these are some of the best campaigns I've ever been a part of. So thank you. Thank you for coming back to say goodbye to to two characters for us. We appreciate that. Literally, give us, give us a little closure. Um, let's say. Uh, who do I go to next? Um, Omega, where, do, where can the folks find you? Hey, uh, yeah, again, I'm Omega, also known as Critical Bard. Uh, you can find me everywhere at Critical Bard. Uh, a couple of specific places are, what's today? Uh, Wednesday. Uh, on Saturday, you can catch me on my channel for uh, Let's Get Wild Mount. We're coming back after our long hiatus. On Mondays, you can catch me with Realmsmith for Enter the Mist, which is the Christmas Straw campaign. Uh, there's other things I do on other days, but they're currently on hiatus right now. Uh, yeah, uh, you'll be able to catch me at some point, uh, uh with the Champions of the Realm, which is a Idol Champions D and D um sponsored show with Realm Smith, where we play Idol Champions characters of uh, PvP nice. fight to the death, and I am totally a human, probably. Not three kobolds in a trench coat, naked human. So that'll be fun. But more information about that will be shared on my socials. Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitch as a Twitch partner, playing lots of Dead by Daylight, and officially starting probably tomorrow because it just came out the anniversary edition of Skyrim. Uh, nice. So yeah, that that's me. It's been a blast being here. I love this little uh, adorable little thing who loves to learn and experience and now he's you know full-blown demigod status so let's go i i love i want to say like you came to me with such a fun little character concept and i was so excited that you were like trying something really interesting and unique so i was i was glad to help to let you create it and then the makeup you brought to it is just like phenomenal so i could do it one more time for you <laughs> I, I that contour it. i'm so sorry yeah they're, they <laughs> it. 
They're amazing. Uh, Joy, where can the folks find you? And how was Extra Life? Uh, Extra Life was good. We raised over $1,000. Uh, so right. that will be the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. Um, but yeah, you can find me here on Twitch and Twitter. And I'm probably going to be probably talking about Final Fantasy XIV because that is my <laughs> life. It's sad that it got delayed two weeks, but it's fine. I now and I was telling everybody before I'm now in the cleaning phase because I have nothing else to do <laughs> besides work. But <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, you can find me here, Curious Joy everywhere. And thank you guys so much for having me. I had no idea what I'm doing. I still don't know what I'm doing, but at least I know where like my initiative button is now on this thing. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, I now yeah. kind of get an idea, I can move through things faster. But like, thanks for being patient with me not knowing anything and like helping out me trying to learn all this stuff because I've always just guessed things and I'd never been a part of like a full thing. So I was like, oh, there's stuff to do. Yeah. Thank <laughs> I you just for being to a good do. sport. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for being a good sport about having things like, okay, now you're all level 10, now you're all level 20 <laughs> thrown at you. Uh, I wish we could have brought you in on a lower level campaign so we could have like guided you along as we went. I'm So I appreciate you being thrown to the fire and still trying to keep up as best you could. So you you were a great sport about this kind of thing. So thank you. Oh, thank um, you. And, yeah. Um, Jordan, where can the folks find you? Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen. You can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pidgeon. I uh, work for the Command Zone YouTube channel now, so you can go watch them. I, I help write the ads and some of their side content and stuff like that. So check that out. Um, also, this is probably my last TTRPG streaming thing for who knows how long. But uh, you can check out over five years of content that I've done on Saving Throw. Um all through the years there. So there's wild cards and legacy and the broken pact and uh, just go on back. There's a bunch of stuff. It's all fun to check out. And uh, you know, this has been a hell of a campaign. This and broken pact been a, been a good time having these characters with everyone. And it's nice thinking that Lysandros is out there jumping through the multiverse planes, walking it up. <laughs> seems, seems like a grand old time. The Planeswalker thing, by the way, is the thing I decided to do because of the great donation that we got from... I, I wanted something big, mm. and I thought, why not end the show with a cool magic thing? And I just picked randomly which one of you was going to be a Planeswalker. I didn't know who was going to be. <laughs> I but, love it. Yeah. Let's let's hope Lysandros does a better job of it than his brother. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think about it, that. That's a good point. It seems yeah. like sparks don't, run in the family. Come back and try to be a god. Uh, all right. And uh, last but of course not least, let's say goodbye to Ashlyn Rose. Hey everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Ashlyn. I am obviously a little emotional. I love this family and I have really loved uh, and enjoyed the journey on this show and all the ones we've done together. Um, this will also probably be my last one for a little bit because we're all very busy, uh, all for really good reasons. Um, I've had a great time. You can find me on uh, Twitter as Ashlyn Rose and I'm on Instagram as Rards Ashlyn. And uh, if you want to check out my voiceover work, it is on um, ashlandrose.com. And um, yeah, follow all these amazing people. They're all creative and talented. And it's been a joy working with every single one of you. And you're very inspiring. And you make me want to just do more of this and any way possible. I want to give a special thanks to both to Ashlyn and Jordan because I know how immensely busy they have been this whole season and, and they've managed to to make space for this show, which has been very kind of them because I know that it's been very hard for them a lot of times. So um, thank you both for coming back to say goodbye with this with me. I said all my stuff at the beginning of this and I think I'll break down if I try to do more. So you can find me on Twitter at Riley J. Silverman. You can find me on Instagram at Riley Silverman. And I got some fun stuff coming up that I still can't talk about because of NDAs. So I will just say that I, the journey of both of these shows has been amazing. And I hope to do more TTRPG stuff. I would like to do more of it, but I think that this is a nice way to close both of these stories. And so this is probably the end of my road for both Broken Pack. And this is definitely the end of Dice X Machina, but, um, I love you all. I love this whole weird table, this whole weird family. And uh, I love this channel and Dom does amazing stuff. And Dom brings really interesting voices to the table. And I hope that he gets continued to do so for a long time. And I hope to see all these beautiful people at some point, both in person and out in the world and, and doing amazing stuff. Cause you're all so talented and you're all so kind. 
and so fun to play with. So that's it for me. And let's just say one last big thank you to our benevolent overlord, Dom Zook. And yes, always. Thank you. It's, it's late for our, our, our people on different time zones. So I will say I will stop self-indulging and I'll say I love you all. Good night.